pray for Josh to get here, but let's go live nonetheless. Hello everybody and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will and today we are back and we are playing Long March once again, hopefully, maybe. If Josh is alive, we're not too sure yet. He sent me a message saying that he's just woken up and that he's running uh, to, uh, to to clothe himself, one can only assume. So, uh, fine. Like uh, you know. Like yeah, yeah, I mean... Which doesn't mind a little, you know... A little something, something. A little bit. A little something, well, something. I know, you know... We can get caught up because yeah. Gavin was not here last week. We can, we can catch up with one another. Absolutely. Catch up with Gavin, my favorite TV show. Catch up with Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I know that Josh is having uh, a, a, a long fucking couple of weeks. He's moving house, he's house hunting, he's job hunting, he's doing all this stuff on top of stream. So uh, it, we'll give him five minutes and he'll show up, I'm sure. Uh, but let's go around the cast and crew. Who are, we, who are we playing? Let's talk about our characters. Of course, if you're looking for our characters, you can find them here on our website. Uh, let's start with, yes, the, the Enigma, the man who was not here last week, but has returned. Like the prodigal son, um, Tall School. How's it going? Uh, going good. How are you guys doing? I yeah. um, am. Uh, sorry, I wasn't here uh, last week. I was doing Fourth of July stuff, and but still doing D and D stuff. But it was Fourth of July cookout, cookout and campaign. Uh, yeah. D and D Fourth of July. You know, there was explosions. There was beer. There were dice that were rolled. It was it was a glorious, glorious thing. It was the best of times. It was the worst of the times. <laughs> it really was. It was me DMing for the first time actually live. I've always DM'd like on Twitch or through Real20. Mm -hmm. So having people like right there, like right there was interesting. But it was three new players. Oh, yeah. And so that was it was fun to sort of guide them through their first adventure. And uh, yeah, cool. that was great. But back to this, I am playing Gavin Fjordhammer, who uh -oh. is uh, a returning character for Encounter Roleplay. He's been around for uh, a couple of uh, one shot and then Samurai Sigil and now uh, back here for the Long March. Um, he is a uh, level, level five Paladin of St. Cuthbert and level five um, Death Cleric of the Raven Queen. Uh, because due to happenstance in his past, he had a hand uh, cut <laughs> cut off and then replaced uh, with a necrotic hand uh, of dedicated to the Raven Queen. And so he went through a couple of adventures um, of sort of trying to figure out his place with the being split between these two deities and sort of trying to rectify in his own mind and between these two deities of where he fits in the world. Um, he is a big uh, preacher of common sense and hope and um, faith in humanity, even though this war has uh, certainly been a long and trying time for him. He's in the, or was, we shall see, in command of a group called um, Hope's Return, which was a mix of a dozen uh, clerics and paladins of St. Cuthbert mm. and uh six of a group of vampires known as the returned who are sort of the honor guard um, bodyguards of the raven queen that she has seen in her uh that she wants to redeem but for all i know they're all dead for all i know i'm all dead um, because <laughs> yeah, actually the last sorry mate you're dead <laughs> basically a holy hand grenade going off as one of my vampires uh jumped on top of it to try to save the day and you know, then darkness and now there's only darkness. Now there, well, we'll see. Your old friend, or, or just the, a, a whole lot of nothing until we get a Josh. So uh, <laughs> absolutely, we shall see. I'm gonna throw some links, uh, linking to some of the uh, mm. old episodes uh, that are in, on Counter World Plays YouTube if you want to catch up with more of Gavin's story. So I don't waste all of your time. And yeah, I will move on. No worries, no worries. Uh, also, very prudish duckling cheers. He says, I think Greg or Tuscan could use some of my luck. Thank you, lad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be I'll be taking that nat 20, and I'll be putting it where the sun don't shine. Um, so let's go around uh, with the other people. We've got Louise back today. How's it going, Louise? I am doing great. I am alert and ready to not die today. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Talk to us about Kazna. Kazna, I'm playing Kazna, Kazna Vandre, who is here encountering this long march with her sister Zune, who you'll hear more about in a short while. Uh, they are 
descendants of this kind of noble family in the Underdark, and as a result of something that happened in said Underdark, they cannot go home for fear of being killed immediately and having, well, no home to really go back to. And so they came up here together and they fought in this war together. And now that it's seemingly perhaps over, they're kind of in, lost in between of not knowing what to do. But given some interesting things that happened to the pair of them last time and some interesting things that they can now do, it seems altogether possible that they can go home and they can reclaim what they lost there. And so that's currently their goal, along with, you know, enslaving all of the human race and, you know, taking over the world that comes after. We've got a lot of plans. <laughs> There's a lot of plans on the table right now. First of all, is Drow Christmas. Yeah. We can move yeah. on from there. We're still celebrating Drow Christmas. Yeah. Still long... celebrating Drow Christmas. You need Drow New Year, then you can make your resolutions. <laughs> and... Oh, my God. <laughs> Fantastic. That's She's great. She's awesome. Cool. Awesome. We've got, Ho- <laughs> yeah, we got our home back today, uh, reprising his role as Aureus. How's it going, my friend? It's going very well. Uh, so, yeah, my, my character, uh, what is he doing here? He has no idea. What, what am I doing? doing? So, so, JJ, uh, what am I doing here? A, he's a druid that actually grew up from a very, from a wee lad in the uh, deep forest. He's a wood elf. Um, he was raised by Fae in the deep forest of Elysium, very far to the south, very uninhabited lands. And, uh, he worships a deity called Sylvanus, who is the uh, deity of balance in nature. And he's uh, he was called here by Sylvanus because Sylvanus felt as if uh, um, the realm was threatened. So he was called to help. Um, and of course, being in such debt to Sylvanus and such a devout follower, he had to listen. Um, and another thing, he's very close with the Fey realm. And the Fey have began closing their portals to this realm because of the demonic presence. So uh, Aureus feels as if it's his duty to... Uh, even though he doesn't like to pick sides, he's a very self-serving individual. He needs to pick the side, um, which isn't going to kill all of nature. Uh, so that's what he's doing here. And when he was uh, he was last, um, he was faced with a void, a void thing that sucked him in, and um, yeah. he actually communicated with the void, and he was uh, learned some interesting things about the void. So indeed, indeed. Uh, and here we are. And speaking of voids, I think Zune uh, fits segues into that quite well, being devoid of any kind of soul. Uh, how's it going, Laurelania? <laughs> really good, actually. I had an amazing weekend. I was Great. at Nexcon. I was the host. I got to meet Grant Ellis, who signed every single one of my D&D books. And I had a really cool first ever D&D experience. Um, every year after Nexcon, we go back to the hotel uh, and hang out for a little while. Usually it's just a bunch of kids drinking and doing nothing. But this time, uh, Grant Ellis showed up and I brought all my books down to sign for him. And there was this, you know, young lad who was like, I've always wanted to play D&D. And I was like, oh, do you want me to help you build a character sheet for just for fun? And Grant's like, I'm going to get the dice. We're doing a campaign right now. Oh, nice. And I had my first ever, like, random campaign. We got everybody into it. There was, like, six of us. And all of a sudden, we're just in the woods, you know, delivering some spell components to some people in Waterdeep, and it was awesome. And now Um, you're brought back to this crushing, dreadful (laughs) campaign. I know. Uh, That was like a heroic campaign, and now I'm just like, oh, everything. That sounds awesome. That sounds Um, awesome. About Zune, Zune Vandry, of course, the sister of Kazna, who she had mentioned. Um, Zune is very self-centered and neutral evil. She is a necromantic um, dark elf wizard, I guess, necromantic implies wizard um but she recently has made a deal with Kyrian Selene wizards not typically being very close to gods um she has promised Kyrian Selene that she will sweep undeath across the surface and then go down to the underdark and deliver the drow souls unto Kyrian Selene letting her you know take over and she did that because Kyrian Selene took her into another realm her own realm and basically was sucking out her soul so Thankfully, you guys had given me a nat 20, in which I used in coercing the goddess into letting me live and letting her serve her. And now my character is trying to hide the fact that from about the waist down, she is completely undead. And I believe that the only way she'll be able to survive on the regular is if she eats the flesh of the undead because of this new uh, necrotic thing that has happened to her. And her loving steed, Morty, is now an undead horse, which is something... I've always wanted, so I can't wait to show you guys this kind of action here. Here we go. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, and as for myself, uh, I'll be playing Gregor Tosken, 
uh, who is a lovable dwarf. Um, he is a dwarf uh, level uh, seven fighter level three warlock, I believe. Um, he had a bunch of convicts who he was commanding with this demon pact, but now this demon pact has led him to being able to throw up magma uh, at will. It seems uh, not necessarily just me, uh, but it's yeah, it's kind of painful for him. He's got uh, is it? Oh, it's not Magni's blood, is it? Um, I've got to find the name of my spell. Um, which I wrote down somewhere. I'm I am perfectly sure I wrote this down somewhere. Yes, I wrote down blood of Moradin. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got Moradin's blood fr uh, flowing through my veins. Uh, Gregor kind of just wants to get the job done. He doesn't care too much for his own life. Um, he at any cost things will get done. He also makes a lot of foul-mouthed comments. He has no filter whatsoever, um, and is uh, warning incredibly offensive at times. So um, it's. It's good fun getting to play him. So, uh, yeah, that is Gregor. So, Josh, how uh, how are you, dude? Are you are you are you with us? Are you in the realm of the living today? Dude, are you I, kind of in limbo. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I. Sorry, guys, I'm I'm running late. I I came in and I sat down and I was like, right, I need to write some bits before the session, and then I woke up. Um, <laughs> I, I cast I cast uh, sleep on you. It's okay. Yeah, you no, needed it. I yeah, I've uh, I've worked twenty somewhere around 26 to 27 hours uh, since yesterday morning. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling You're ready. good. You're ready. Yeah. You, you know there are 24 hours in a day, Josh. you you got <laughs> you got to pace yourself, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. But still, it's literally my last day at my job tomorrow and then on to big and bright things and crazy stuff. So my schedule might be a little bit out of whack and I might... Uh, uh, we might understand. But then... I get to hopefully play a, a shit ton more D and D with you guys, so that's what it's all about. So yeah. Anyway, um, well, head, brain, focus. So in the zone. Um, I'm unfortunately going to have to uh, look over to Mr. Tool and I'm going to have to ask everyone, invite everyone with me to sort of sit in the audience and, and stare because this is going to be a, a momentary, um, a momentary moment with uh, <laughs> with. Mr. Tallscore and Surely not. more specifically Gavin. Gavin, um, we're going to start off uh, without giving you any information. I just need you to do me two things. Okay. I need you, first of all, roll me a constitution saving throw with no knowledge of why or, where's, or what's going on. What's happening to your body right now? You don't know. You don't know. Roll me a con save to to love it. Oh, and 15. And very briefly, if you haven't followed yet, you guys know how to interact with the show. Follow. Here's a tweet for you guys. And every hundred pounds on the Kickstarter. All right, I'll shut up. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, we'll start off with the 15. So, um, Gavin, what um, give me a happy memory, like something, something that Gavin would sort of hold on to your happy place. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Like a, a a major moment, it could it could be something as simple as you know that fireside conversation with a certain someone. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it's it's home. It's a uh, Volgan home where he had his smithy and where you know his days were filled. You know, probably a a, a cool, uh, er, you know, early late winter, early spring morning as he was starting to get the plows ready for uh, you know the first tilling of the ground and putting the horseshoes on these big draft horses, and that you know the promise of spring is coming and. Uh, that also means not just you know everything that goes along with spring, but everything is a blacksmith. But that means of uh, the work and you know having real purpose and having you know all the people come in to have things repaired and talking with friends. Sort of uh, Volgenholm is to the north, sort of kind of Nordic area. So people finally are you know not just sort of trapped in their homes and they're starting to come out and around. And basically Volgenholm sort of comes to life the twins his two apprentices uh no relation to the twins in this campaign um are uh, other than just they remind him of them uh you know are uh probably playing jokes and getting you know kind of randy and and after being shut in for the whole winter but they're running around helping to get the forge and the blacksmithery all set up and ready to go yeah so i mean you you get that moment where you feel um, you feel the familiar. You you get that. There's that slight oaty smell that uh, comes with sort of the feed 
uh, of horses. You can actually feel sort of like one, the rough tongue of one just lapping at your hand as you're feeding it. You can't really make out any visuals. Like everything is just really blurry and it's like you're staring into an intense light that's coming in and you're in a dark place, but it's like it's uh, managing to seep in through cracks in a, an old barn uh, that sort of seen the test of time. It's uh, it's seen it's just so much rainfall and stuff. The wood has swollen and then it's it's decreased again and huge cracks have appeared in the side. And it's just, it's a very surreal uh, and trippy sort of experience where you you feel like you're almost floating through these memories um but you're very much aware that there's something coming as you're sort of like uh swirling around you're sort of hearing noises in the distance there's this sound that uh seems to bring with it discomfort uh, the sound is very simple it's um it it's uh, a rhythmic sort of pattern it sounds like a, a scratching sound, like but a very heavy scratching sound. It's quiet, but it's getting louder, and then a loud funk. Um, and it, each funk sort of brings with it almost like a sort of the like it, when you crunch through fresh bread, and you've got that really crisp crust to it, and you you tear it apart. You can hear that kind of sound, and it's bringing with it like this pain this nausea and it starts slight at first and then begins to build and you can't recall the faces of anyone around you you're just in this lost state and you can feel it building and building and taking away this memory from you and you start to realize that you are in a lot of pain like a lot of pain your head is going to feel like you've uh you know, you've just had your head dunked in, in ice, uh, like in a, in a bucket full of ice. Um, your body is sort of simultaneously sweating, but you feel sort of wrong. And there's like this churning in your gut. It's everything just suddenly comes forth and it's accompanied by this sound. And then you realize you sort of blink your eyes a few times and there is like almost a film of dust across your eyes and sort of very dry eyes blink away almost dirt and grime and build that whatever this is and you realize that you're not staring at sort of sunlight coming through uh a, a wall or so you're not staring at anything familiar you're staring at a sky um and you're moving very slowly and it appears you are laying on your back uh your body feels about as terrible as you've ever felt uh, so for this, my friend, how many hit points does Gavin have as a maximum? 107. Welcome to 10 hit points, my friend. Okay. Um, this is your temporary maximum, um, and that will become clear why in a minute. Okay. You, it's going to take you a moment to really realize this, but um, you are being dragged. The sound that you can hear is uh, basically your body scraping across uh, the crust of a wasteland and you can hear the, the sort of loud crack uh, is footsteps just past your head that are breaking through the uh, this film of uh, sun-baked earth. You you pretty much feel like you, you couldn't lift your own arm at this point, but Drug by the feet or drug by the arms or a arm or one arm, one arm. So ball um, to the side. Okay. Yeah. You will notice that your other arm doesn't seem to want to respond. Um, okay. Now, very important question. Right arm or left arm uh, is the Raven Queen's hand. Right arm is uh, mm -hmm. the Raven Queen's because it was my main hand. Okay. It was my dominant hand when it was taken from me. Okay. Um, that is currently lying limp at your side and seems unresponsive. It's not just the hand, your whole arm. Um, okay. It hurts a lot. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder? And I mean, mm. quite badly. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever so had So every it bump, done? every everything is that horrible, yeah. Well, that that's the wonderful thing about dislocating shoulders. They can be relocated. Yours has been. It's not been done correctly. 
you can assume. I know that you, one too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you sort of like, as you manage to drag your gaze down, your arm is uh, almost a purplish, greeny hue. It's almost like the necrotic hand has uh, really taken, but you can tell it's not, it's not the same. Um, however, against all the odds, your fingers on that hand still seem to twitch and move. Um, it would appear your arm isn't actually dead, dead. It just needs some severe medical attention. Uh, your left hand, as you look up, is held by the wrist and you are being dragged by a figure, a figure that is currently uh, as torn up as you've ever seen them. Uh, there is tumbling black mess of hair that falls down her back. Uh, she is limping badly. She looks like she's barely got the strength to drag you at this point. Uh, her clothing is more tattered than uh, you've ever seen it. And that's quite a feat considering that uh, this would be a certain druid uh, that served with you. And um, you notice that uh, she's dragging you just with one hand. Um, the reason for that being she's missing her other arm at the elbow down. Mm. Um, it is bleeding openly. Uh, it looks like it's been wrapped badly and it's soaked through. Um, she looks like she's barely got the strength to keep dragging you. But just past her, running in your direction, is uh, a familiar face. And you will see Vincent herring towards you. Um, he looks like a man who's been uh, chewed up and spat back out. He uh, currently doesn't appear to be carrying anything more than uh, his sword, which uh, looks like it's actually sort of shorter, like bits have been snapped off. The handguard is broken. I mean, he's dragging it across the floor. It's leaving a trail through the, uh, through the dirt. Um, and behind him, you can see that uh, there is this castle atop a mountain and that would be the fortress of hex <laughs> um you don't hear any sounds of battle you don't see any uh signs of uh life you are being dragged through what is essentially a graveyard toward the fortress of hex or away from the fortress of hex uh you're going towards it um Vincent's uh, running away from it. No, Vincent's running straight at you. It looks like he's coming from that direction. Right, but so I'm being drugged towards the Fortress yeah. of X. Yeah. Vincent is running away from the fortress towards us, not trying to catch up with us. So he's no, no, he's no. heading towards us, being drugged yeah. that way. I sort of croak out. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, stop. I need to set my shoulder correctly. She uh, she stops, and uh, at that point her knees give out, and uh, she's still holding on to your hands somehow. But um, she looks like she's gone about as far as she's gone. Um, am I rest? Am I tapped out spell wise? Oh yeah, this is gonna have to be the old fashioned way, my friend. I'm afraid. Okay. Um... So she she's fell onto the ground. I'm able to get. Uh, I assume I, I can I wrench my uh, arm or my left arm out of her grip. She uh, she doesn't really have the strength to contend you. And I mean okay. you you'd know that uh, that's yeah. It takes quite a lot to put them. Oh, in I know. Gwendolyn's stronger than me because yeah. with her vampiric strength. So I, that's why I was checking to see if she was still in a death you know her grip on me but mm. I pull my hand uh, away from hers and I roll over just in agony as I do knowing what I've got to do it's a uh, wasteland so right so it's flat yeah it's uh, you will know like if you put too much pressure on the uh, the surface you'll punch through about half a foot and then find uh, hard baked earth beneath but there's almost like a salt crust that uh, covers everywhere Yep. 
um, I assume that tr- I've been pulled through the salt crust behind me. So there's sort of this trail. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you're kind of a heavy dude. I didn't yeah. want to bring it up. Um, oh yeah, but, uh, no, he's, he's 260, 270 pounds cause he's yeah. six, seven and built like a brick house. Yeah. Um, so, uh, because he knows he's got to get to the hard pack dirt. So just, he gets it one arm and he rolls over so that he can, you know, he doesn't have the salt crust where he can sort of see in his trail and sort of gets himself perpendicular to it and he pushes himself up one arm and he just goes Cuthbert just don't let me pass out and just slams the right shoulder into the hard packed earth to knock it back out of socket so he can re set up. He just clenches his teeth and as hard as he can just and with that horrible ka-chunk there is uh, yeah it's there's a soft pop um, and uh, there's also the sound of metal clanking against metal as uh, your armor sort of this uh, very ragtag piece of armor uh, sort of you, you feel parts of it have been torn away um, and that's kind of sad because I mean Gavin I, from what I understand and from what I remember Gavin's armor is unique in the fashion that it is uh, collected pieces of all of the battles like it just like yes. anything he could find along the way it is as much a wasteland as the place he currently resides so yeah you, any loss of any piece of the splints is a loss of a piece of gavin's life those little pieces of metal everything from sword broken swords to teapots or tea kettles or uh whatever village or place that he went any piece of metal sometimes it was even just a couple coins that someone might have given him that uh, in thanks that he then pounded and formed being a blacksmith into this sort of patchwork quilt of but metal quilt of mm. his splint male armor so yeah. gavin's gavin's comfort blanket pretty of, much uh, of all the battles he's endured all the pain um you you feel it pop out give me a give me a medicine check this is not just for the uh sort of snapping your arm back into place this is also uh you, you kind of need a self-assessment of how bad it is right now 26 a 26 you are in piss poor condition uh you're pretty sure you're you you know your your leg feels a little chewed up um as does your foot uh you will notice actually um i'm gonna give you as some some pretty decent rolls to start with so i'm going to give you a little piece of information you you sort of check yourself over and you realize that you know your your leg is pretty chewed up you have a uh your your arm uh is pretty mangled as well and uh you've managed to relocate it into place and you get the sudden blood rush of uh the release of pressure uh, that's that's gonna bring tears to your eyes. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, suddenly yeah. having blood flow back to uh, everywhere but your hand, which um, just literally the connection is resumed and you can move your hand as uh, you you can play piano again. Um, but uh, yeah, there's these very real sort of uh, moments of you know use the pain to focus on doing a damage assessment and the biggest piece of damage you seem to have sustained is uh, a blow to the chest uh, the front of your armor is caved in there are a strange little arrangement um, that of, of feathers that have been laid on your chest my friend they form uh, a sort of eight sided like rough circle and uh, they are the blackest feathers you can you could imagine and they have been held in place by blood. You'd imagine your own. Um, your chest wound, I mean, you can feel that you've got bits of your armor sort of pushing into your chest. Uh, mm-hmm. So um, at the very least, you're going to need to uh, probably disassemble your armor to get out and then do some serious work on it. But uh, right. you, you live. And with that, Vincent comes literally skidding to a halt next to you. Like he leaves a, a rooster tail of uh, destruction as he tears up the um, the salt. And uh, he's now sort of dropped to one knee, dead stop next to you. And 
as he looks to you, he looks uh, to Gwendolyn, and Gwendolyn falls to the side, uh, completely still. Um, Vincent, take me to her. We have one hope. I, I don't know, but I have to try. He, uh, he will nod, and he's completely sort of stunned at this point. He looks uh, like his composure has been thrown out the window entirely. Um, he will drag you as carefully as he can, uh, and still with quite a lot of strength, um, drag you over to sort of lay propped up next to her. Um, and I don't know whether I have any left or not, but it's other than, you know, vampires, their normal way of, of healing. Um, I'd like to use my necrotic hand if I have any lay on hands. So it's, you know, instead of it being standard healing that through my um, lay on hands with the Raven Queen's hand, potentially seal her shoulder and maybe save her if I can. You uh you can give me a shot. Give me a give me a religion check real quick. Uh is this religion or my attunement to like my gods? Mm. I mean, is it like my cleric wisdom or religion which is ent, which is like study? Just asking, whichever you would like um, me to roll. Yeah, no, I guess yeah. I'll I'll give you I'll give you wisdom. Okay. So that's my cleric casting. Uh so just check. Yeah. <sighs> Ten. Ten. You uh, you reach out for that power, um, and you feel like it is. So you you sort of, it's that sensation of walking into a room that's entirely empty, uh, but feeling like there is, like the walls are caving in. Uh, that that's one way of sort of I can describe it. Or actually, no, a better a better way would be. So you are essentially in a. You feel like I mean. The way, the way to describe it would be being in a tent that is completely still and a hurricane raging outside. There's like this film between you and this power that you're used to. And instead of it being sort of like something which you've come over the years to understand is very much ordered, uh, is very much uh, about sort of, uh, uh, sort of about maintaining balance and a certain degree of uh, order in death. Um, it's almost as if you can hear like chaos on the other side. Um, you uh, you can try and break that, uh, break through and tap into it. It's definitely, I mean, it's exactly the energy you remember. It's got that sort of flavor. Uh, it sort of gives you these fluttering sensations behind your eyelids as in mm -hmm. you can feel the Raven's her, wings. Yeah, her energy. Um as it's Gwendolyn's life and she most assuredly saved mine. And even if she hadn't, she had dedicated her life to this or unlife to it. Um, cool. Gavin's going to try. Okay. Um, you are going to, uh, you're going to unfortunately experience a little bit more pain, buddy. Uh, you're okay. going to take some damage from this. Um, I do so hope this doesn't drop you because uh, this is going to sting a little. Um, and it's going to feel like a lot more. Uh, it's only four. It's only four. You're going to take four uh, necrotic damage. No reductions of any kind allowed. You um, you sort of pierce the veil, and you hear the sounds of a thousand screams on the other side. It's uh, it's not necessarily. I mean, some of it's terror. Uh, there's a lot of anger. Um, and you uh, you get some pretty vivid moments where you are thinking other people's last thoughts. Um, you you see other people's last moments from their perspective, but it happens so quick that it's torn away from you before you can even process what you're witnessing. And uh, you, you manage to uh, reach out, grab her arm, and there is suddenly the smell of seared flesh as you cauterize the stump instantly. Um, then there's a slight crack, and Gwendolyn is thrown about 10 feet from you, and you hit Vincent, who manages to stop you cold. But that reverberation goes straight up your arm, which has only just been relocated, and it's just yeah. like hell. Um, 
that is that is not the usual way this i mean healing is usually yeah. saying you you channel out you have a sort of the the stop clock and you uh you meter out as much healing no this was this was all or nothing there is such power but it's just chaotic and without order um so yeah vincent what of the others are we all that's left he winces and uh, looks to you and he says, I did not honestly think you would make it. I'm not sure that I have, but if there's it's... always hope. <laughs> there's no hope left. There must no, be... No, you, you don't understand. Uh... I know Nora made it, and uh, he gestures towards uh, the very much crippled-looking Gwendolyn. Um, he says, her, uh, other than her, I have only seen Shin, who is Did he gone. Make it? He didn't make it back to her. Wherever he is, it is not this place, and it is not the one promised to us. But there are two others that aren't where they're supposed to be. I remember. But of the twins? He sort of like looks out and leans back, sits on his heels as he stares over the absolute carnage. Uh, and instead of looking like the confident man, you, you recognize him as sort of the kingly man who uh, has always been in command. He he looks pretty torn apart and says, uh, I, I don't know where they are. And Neither does she. She should be able to call them back. But this amount of death, the she... halls of judgment are overflowing. There are not enough of her servants to weigh the dead. Yes, she has bigger problems, but, and there's tears in Gavin's eyes. They are also my responsibility. And he looks down to you pretty coldly at that and nods. Uh, our responsibility. while on this plane. Gavin, they... You have lost favor. You were dead. Gone from this world. And... the only way... I managed to convince her to spare you from what was to come. Was to do something heinous. I'm sworn to secrecy on what it was, but I bought your life and somebody else has been punished. Oh, Vincent, what have you done? Uh. Listen to me. If you ever want to see her again, not the Raven Queen. I know. If you want to see her again, she brings you this message. 
You must bring the twins to heal. And you must kill their sister. I understand. Vincent, will you, can you, stand with me in this? Or is this my task alone? I have something I must do first. A task of monumental proportion. One which I am not sure I will return from. But if I do, I will stand by you. One last time. You are Service to the Queen is admirable, but your friendship over these years has meant even more. Is there any way I can assist you as you go on this journey to, to fulfill this task? Roll me a perception check, because, I mean, your vision is kind of swimming, and uh, this is... Kind of an important one, so. Okay. And I don't have a thing. So, yeah, it's just, let's see what the dice say. 22. I'm not even sure that's a good result, to be honest. Oh, no. <laughs> you see him, you, you sort of mentioned the monumental task, and as you do, he looks scared. He looks pretty terrified. His head sort of sinks his whole expression everything about him sags slightly and he turns very gently and steals a glance towards the fortress the fortress uh I, if you remember from last episode i'll run you a quick refresher has been decimated it still stands uh there's a tarrasque in the door <laughs> right is that yeah yeah there is and he says, I have one last soul to bring to her. He is not dead then. Depends on who you mean by he. I forget his name. Hex, what was his name? That was Hex. Hex. He's just known as Hex. Yep. He, uh, Hex, shakes, Hex shakes, lives. Shakes his head and says, The five killed him. But that's not the soul I have to bring to her in exchange for you. Can you tell me who? Not who. What? And he slowly stands and says, I've helped you as much as I can. Your friends, some of them, if you still call them that, or ever did, made it to the cliffs. They're camping there now. I will go join them. Um, has Gwendolyn recovered, or was that basically, or was did it maybe she, send her? I mean, is she alive, undead? Is she okay? Um, no idea. So I, I just look at Vincent and I place either hand on his shoulders and I, whatever blessing I can give you. If even if it's just my word, it goes with you, friend. And know, if you must call on me, I will always answer. He, uh, he nods, but he's pretty, pretty distract, uh, pretty distracted at the moment. Yep. And, uh, he begins to walk towards uh, that last soul. Um, 
and uh, begins a very slow trudge through uh, towards a, a decimated camp through a landscape of the dead. And pretty soon he steps behind a um, <laughs> he steps behind a uh, a pile of corpses and is gone. And yep. you no longer hear his footsteps. Nothing at all. Gwendolyn hasn't moved. She's just laying there. So I go over and quickly just check her out to see whether the power that I imparted into her held her or maybe you helped don't, fulfill her You don't debt. feel any, uh, you don't feel any breath. Uh, her heart doesn't beat, but then again, it doesn't. you're not sure it ever has um, yeah. or in a very, very long time. However, you do sense... Uh, energy within her. Life would be the wrong word, but you sense right. energy within her. Um, it would appear this might not be her final day. Um, however, she's probably uh, gone in this form. This is probably her having to return to her domain. Um, um, is there anything close by other than just the wastes um, here. I mean, I, is there, I don't wanna just leave her laying here in the middle of these wastes if she is moving on um, and not able to come with me. I'm, I'm reading between the lines that she's not able to come with me, so but I don't wanna try. just leave her. You, I mean, you could genuinely try and carry her. You probably need a shield or something to drag her because well, you I've, are... got, I've got Agatha. <laughs> yeah. I've got, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I don't want to leave her in this west wasteland. I know even if even if she will no longer be able to walk the prime material plane, I'm at least taking her back to a, where there's a tree. Okay. That's. And I mean, so, yeah, it's a. She yeah. is. However, so I make however, some kind of spit between what I've got in my pack between Agatha, which is this giant frying pan that I have, which is kind of gruesome, but it's, mm -hmm. it will work. I mean, across the salt flats yeah. and, uh, no, I'm, even if I have to drag her all the way to the top of the cliffs, I'm going to find a tree Okay. for her to, to rest, um, whether I'm, it's for a short while or whether it's yeah. forever. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not going to make you roll for that because, uh, I know Gavin is the kind of man who would probably do it to the death that kind of, you know, yeah, he's, that's he's Gavin. so yeah, so uh, I'm not going to make you roll for it. I'm just going to tell you right now that it's going to hurt a lot. And uh, on that, we're going to, um, <laughs> let's never speak of burgers and cutlery ever. Hmm. Uh, I'm still not over it. So yeah, you guys, um, <laughs> you guys are in a bit of a bind. Um, zooming out from uh, a lone man with a skillet uh, dragged behind him. Uh, it's almost a 30 inch skillet. It's yeah. a shield size skillet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a beast. Yeah. Uh, sort of the handle tied to his belt, dragging sort of like tears and blood running down his face as he drags uh, one of his fallen friends uh, across uh, now Baron like you come out of like the edge and it just suddenly stops and then you'll maybe there's like a body every sort of maybe half a mile sort of randomly look like they've been thrown aside or half eaten or you know been dropped by a Draculich you know bodies get flung out of the fray but almost undisturbed you know, there's just uh, no more crust left it's just been destroyed by the oncoming army um, and yeah you you start to uh, you have an easiest easier time dragging her this way still going to take some time though yep and we're going to zoom out from that uh chaos and we're going to rejoin the party uh as far as they made it last week um because it appears zoom has found someone it appears you guys are not entirely alone in this uh forsaken waste um you have found a very beaten uh uh very exhausted looking man, uh, and this is Clayton Halfiron, who currently has a bow pointed at you, Zune. Um I look on, at him from a top of Morty. You are not on Morty. You dismounted oh. Morty to eat a person. Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> you know how that happens. I still look at him and say, do you think that is a very smart idea? Uh, he looks at the fact that you are drenched in blood, uh, quite fresh blood, sort of all down your face. And uh, he doesn't lower his bow. Um, he hesitates, looks back to the tent and just says, What the fuck were you just doing? You do understand that I am a necromancer and that I must conduct my experiments as I see fit. Would you even have the amount of intelligence to understand what I was doing if I were to explain it to you? Would you like to check my heart? Would that make you feel better? I'm going to give you one chance to try and explain this to me. And then I'm going to shoot you if I don't like the answer. Can I roll a persuasion? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he's, he's, he's pushing you on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I have to know the inner particles of the blood works inside, and each bit of blood leaving something has a metallic taste to it. I happen to quite enjoy it. I am from the Underdark, after all. Would you like to try some? You just, uh... Did you just bite... Eat... One of... The guards? Yes. You he do. shoots you in the leg. God damn it. He shoots you straight it. through the fucking leg. Uh, it doesn't like hurt. I feel anything in, right? yeah, okay. <laughs> it doesn't so hurt. I, but I he cold goes... hands stare at him as he shoots me in the leg. I'm like, are you satisfied? Badass. Uh, he doesn't look particularly uh, particularly cool anymore. He, he goes from very angry to wondering why uh, he's just put a, a longbow arrow through your kneecap and you are still standing on said knee. I uh, break the arrow off and pull it out while looking at him and throw it on the ground. Now, I want you to think very carefully. You are unarmed now. You will draw another arrow, I'm sure, and shoot me. But I am not attacking you. Think about what that means for a moment. Good. Now that you are done thinking, perhaps you will accompany me to my companions downstairs? Are you done with this? He nods. That's a good lad. He looks pretty pretty terrible. Uh, and lo- looks around and says, Are you sick? No, it's just you're so terribly inferior to do any damage to me. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I uh, start walking. He... He doesn't follow. He just sort of follows your gaze as you walk to Morty. Uh, Morty, who looks uh, pretty, pretty riled up by the fact that someone just shot his uh, his owner through the knee. Oh, um, no, that is not a that is not an arrow to the knee joke. That is, if you get <laughs> shot in the knee, that's your life over for most people. Kneecapping is a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, um, he, I try the best that I can to. Oh wait, no, I have a staff. I was say, uh, your knee, your leg, just works. Okay, good, excellent. It's gonna... uh, you can you can have a feel like where the uh the damage is. I'm it not appears... going to while he's in front of me. I I want to seem very like this is like you yeah, know. it's no problem whatsoever. It's I was entirely expecting that to happen in every way. Um, yeah, fine. yeah. He uh, <sighs> sort of uh. There's, yeah, there's this wonderful... If he doesn't follow me, um, I turn to him and say, if you don't follow me, I'm going to magically tie you to my horse and then drag you downstairs. You understand that I have given you every courtesy within the past five minutes. I've explained my genius with my necromancy. I haven't tried to kill you when you shot me. Can you please, for two moments, use your brain and come? And I start, I mount Morty and then start going... Uh, I, I mean, it's pretty sound logic, to be completely frank. Like he, 
You are a necromancer who he just shot in the leg. There is no one around to sort of back him up and you did nothing to uh, to hurt him. He's got off pretty well, he thinks. So he's going to start to follow you, but um, he uh, he doesn't move, but he doesn't flow particularly well. Um, uh, he sort of looks uh, like he's struggling and uh, he will have to pause as he gets to the top of the cliff and he sort of almost sags to one knee and proceeds to vomit what looks like uh, blood mixed with uh, a tar, essentially. Um, and it steams when it hits the floor. It doesn't steam like normal, like it steams. Uh, and he has to like hold himself for a few moments to stop the convulsions. Uh, and then he looks back up to you and it looks like he's just lost all the color in his face. And, uh, oh, it, it like steams when it hits the ground. So I'll, yeah. oh, now who is sick? Perhaps I will be in conducting some of my experiments. He. And you shot me when you're doing this and asking if I'm sick? How dumb are you? Dumb enough to get the plague. Oh. Well, that's, that's what I was trying to warn you about. Oh. Oh, that's why you asked if I was sick. Hmm. I'm not supposed to allow anyone else to leave. Uh, He's got no weapons raised or anything like he could. I'm going to, to attempt to help you out of the kindness of my heart. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a polymorph spell on you. I'm going to change you into something else, and then I'm going to cast a counter spell on you, and theoretically from the experiments I've casted in the past, this will cure you of the plague. And then you will be my indentured servant. Would you like to live? He looks up to you. I'm gonna make a whiz save for this guy. Cause I mean, he's he's been here uh, on his own for a little while. Um, he doesn't feel particularly great. Um, that's six, he, shakes his head uh and sort of a little bit of spittle flicks off as uh he's barely managing to keep himself steady and he says i couldn't go with you why even if i'm cured i made an oath i'm the only one left for a mile in each direction, to best of my knowledge. If anyone else comes out, we have instructions to kill them. You just said you were the only one left, but you said we have instructions to kill them. What precisely do you mean? There were a couple of us who volunteered to stay behind to contain the plague when it came. And uh, he's referring, for you guys in chat, and as a refresher to the party members, um, there's a nasty thing that happens uh, when you fight fiend touched in large numbers. Uh, their bodies uh, create a plague. And this plague is something that's incredibly hard to combat. It gets around most natural immunities to disease. It's, uh, of the, it's, an, it's a plague that comes straight from the abyss. And uh, it is sort of the last laugh of these people um, it's pretty bad uh, in skirmishes, uh, in battles, you know, in towns, in urban areas. Um, less, it doesn't seem to, it's, I mean, it's generally proximity and fluids, uh, but I mean, you know, you don't want to be standing around bodies for too long. Um, the number that have died, it's probably the worst that it could be. Um, and he points out, and I mean, you can see the the, the corpses from, from miles and miles away. There's almost like ants all over the edge floor. Of the cliff right Very close, uh, unfortunately for him. Uh, there is a ramp that uh, he would fall onto, but I mean, it's 400 feet down. Uh, it's solid metal. Oh, it's he would fall metal. onto the ramp? So I yeah. I mean, yeah, but he would roll 400 feet down a solid oh. metal ramp um, and hit the floor on the other side. Whether or not he'd survive in his condition is anyone's guess. Yeah, I was thinking of casting magic because we'll just send him off the side and kill him because technically, if he's plagued, then he should die anyways. He I'm looks so like he's condemned himself to death, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm just going to polymorph him anyways because it's not what he wants. It's funny that way. So okay. uh, I begin casting. Okay. Uh, dare I ask, Laura Lania, what does this poor bastard become? Uh, I want him to feel small and in insignificant in every single way. So I think I'm going to turn him into a sheep. You turn him into a sheep. So uh, there's a sudden... He looks terrified. His eyes bulge. Uh, his face sort of... He screams, but it's more than a scream. It's sort of as he, op as he opens his mouth. Yeah, it comes out and his, <laughs> his teeth seem to punch through his jaw and they it sort of erupt outwards and a snout forms. He collapses on the floor, sort of clutching at his at his stomach in, in pain. And when he goes to sort of expand his arms, he realizes that they're far too short now. Uh, Stumpy, his legs similarly sort of melting at the knees so they, they close into one. And yeah, fluff begins to sort of spread out. It wraps itself around his clothing. And uh, the man that was... Uh, Clayton Halfiron uh, is now a sheep, uh, also potentially known as Clayton Halfiron. Uh, I don't have any rope or anything, so I can't make him come with me. So I guess I'll just count. It is the count of all that is polymorph, right? He's Clayton Man Sheep. <laughs> Clayton Man Sheep, indeed. Uh, oh, wait. But I may not have. I may not be able to turn him not into a sheep. Hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna leave him in the sheep. Fuck him. Uh, and I go downstairs. <laughs> Fuck him. Everybody. Guys, I found a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, he's not plagued anymore. It's I'm like the plague him. sheep. Well, yeah. he's not plagued anymore. The polymorph theoretically will change his material makeup. He'll turn back into who he was if the sheep ever dies. He can mm. try to commit sheep suicide, but I don't know if he's smart enough. Sheep aside, I'm just gonna say <laughs> plague from the abyss. I think might might. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, his I mean suicide isn't what's on his mind. Uh, figuring out how the fuck uh, he stands up now he's quadrupedal, uh, and just a ball of cotton wool. Um, he's never been a sheep before. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Really? It's not his thing. Never happened. God. Not even once. <laughs> never even dabbed. This is my first time, so yeah, uh, be gentle. Be gentle. Give me with easy him. on me, guys. It's my first <laughs> time. Yes. Uh, so he's a he, sheep virgin. Yeah, indeed. Unlike uh, most of Wales. <laughs> yeah. So he rolls to his feet. Um, <laughs> dear God. Uh, yeah. Will Will doesn't like sheep. There was uh, there was an incident. Oh really? We don't we don't <laughs> no, we don't really. we don't speak the incident. Yeah. For no, most, there was an incident. Mostly for legal reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But there was an incident. He was sort of. Oh, like, I wasn't that your gnome? No wait, that was Xerox's. No, wait, that was you. <laughs> Never you mind. And that's how we find out. Yeah, indeed. Wheels, so, um, <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, you, you see him sort of like very gingerly get to his hooves uh, and uh, just bleats at you. What the hell is... Why have you got sheep? Where'd you find that fucker and all this? Yeah, I go down, and if the sheep follows me, then great. But if not, I don't really care. Um, the sheep steps onto the uh, the platform. Mm -hmm. Makes a dramatic and arrival. And the sheep promptly. Uh, do you mean the sheep slide? Yeah, the <laughs> sheep. The sheep promptly begins to. Uh, he's shown the sheep. <laughs> Just make sure yes, like, well, that's exactly what I see. Yeah. Shaun the sheep going down well, the that, slide. That, that, that's the problem. It's a solid piece of metal, and it's it's. I mean. There's no grip to it, and he has hooves now. So he just fucking slides the entire left. Uh, he's gonna sort of manage to stop himself from killing himself at the end, uh, but he's sort of just half buried in a in salt. Uh, he is now uh, salted lamb, and just laying there on the floor, flailing. Well, this is perfect, sister. Well done. Pop him on the fire. We'll have dinner tonight. Oh, food! Delicious! Don't mind if I do good hunt in there. Oh, it's been a long time since I've had... Salted lamb as well. This day just keeps getting better and better. I bet better than the fucking dingleberries the elf's been giving me. Rolls her sword. She's like, let's go. Merry drow Christmas, sister, but hold, hold. Um, that was actually a human. I think it was a human. Ah, uh, wood elf. Wood elf, whatever. One I of think. the lesser creatures. Um, and he had the plague. He, he shot me in the leg. Um, he saw me while I was conducting Wait. experiments. What? He shot you. Yes, it was... How did a fucking okay. sheep become an elf? I think it's the other way around, dear. What? 
So he has the plague, and I'm trying to help. Which is so kind. Um, so I polymorphed him, and he apparently says that there's a plague around the area, and that his job is to stop anyone from getting the plague. So I turned him into a sheep, and I don't know if we should eat him, because it may give you the plague. Wait, 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 wait! How do you know that's gonna cure him of a plague and turned into a fucking sheep? Theoretical, of course. Well, I'll tell you what will cure him. Kill the bloody thing. If his job is to stop the plague... Oh, you mean like cure him? Like him. curing the meat? That's quite good, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite good. Also, really fucked up. Did he, did he ask you to do that? No, of course not. So, so it's kind of an involuntary sheep transformation crime which you've committed. It bleats at you. <laughs> hey, I hear you, buddy. I fucking hear you. <laughs> You're speaking my language, mate. I don't suppose you have another charge on that whole sheep thing, do you? I do, but let's. I like our companions. The sheep, so the sheep sort of sits, bleats, and sort of like Please. curls into a little f fluffy ball <laughs> of, te of sheer terror. Orius, Orius over over here. I was gonna say. But Ruined. Would you like does, does, Ori, does Orius over here? This this where I'm, I'm I'm there, right? I don't think yeah, I was there. Like, <laughs> Orius is so like, chill. Come in, like slide down. Orius, that'd, that'd be hard to miss. Orius, I know I know you're a bit <laughs> of a sheep shagger. Sheep, <laughs> sheep slide, probably <laughs> all the way down. I I look at the sheep, but the sheep is not. A sheep? Do I know this is not a sheep? I know this is not a Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna say... <laughs> this, like, this is not a real sheep. The sheep is a lie. <laughs> this is a fake sheep. This is, this is artificial sheep. Uh, I look at see Morty's, sheep. Morty's, 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 Morty's too, right? Yeah, I'm, I've let Morty go so he can just go do Morty. I, I look, I look at the, uh, Orius looks at the undead horse and the sheep and, and at Zune and he, I've had enough of you breaking the cycle of unbalance and I cast a spell magic on the sheep. No, he has the plague! He's got the- I counterspell? I counterspell. I counterspell. Kaza draws a sword. Shut, 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 Hold on here. I can't- can you believe we're going to such lengths over a fucking sheep? No. Oh my god. No. Listen, you fucking animal fuckers. I don't know what the hell is going on that man, but if he's got the fucking plague, he can fuck right off. Hey, exactly. You're gonna counter spell? You're gonna counter yeah, I'm gonna counter spell. It has the fucking plague. I don't this want my sister. Hold on a second. Okay, okay. let's see if this works. Let's family go. <laughs> to sheep or not to sheep? That's the question. Okay, okay guys. So, uh, first of all, I'm gonna need a. <laughs> it's nothing. It's third or lower. Making a bit. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah counter spell just. Oops. Yeah, so boom. Yeah, 3D yeah, thunk. You uh so, you we're back where we started. <laughs> oh, so so Irvin's gonna uh use his Patreon pledge to give Erho and Laurelania both a wild magic surge as their magic clashes as a D ten perfect time. A D ten thousand. Oh my god, they they crossed the streams. They, did. <laughs> they crossed they the sheep. Yeah, I've never crossed oh, the sheep. No. Um this is going to spook uh, Morty, who is going to dash uh, out into the wastes? Oh, that's okay. Let me go. He'll come back. He he rides off majestically. Like you see that beautiful scene. It's like Shadow Facts, except all fucked up and zombified, <laughs> riding through the plains <laughs> instead of like beautiful He's black green. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, instead so we of... roll a D ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, I got a command oh, for you guys in Zoom. So if you just copy that okay. out, I should. I pray want... you don't get 10,000. Praise if, curiously. If you, if you get 10,000, you will blow up the nearest <laughs> star. The nearest star explodes. Oh, is this is so much bigger than mine. Okay, cool. Right. Don't. That's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, low okay. is you, sometimes good. Uh, exactly. So 982 reads, The caster gradually becomes more and more angular. <laughs> of what? <laughs> so like more gaunt. Your cheekbones are going to be on fleek. Okay. Oh, that oh, actually kind of works. works. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, hip bones pointing out everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Telling me. You look like Isma. Oh my yeah, god. Thanks, Egg. Great. And then four um, nine four seven for Aureus Reeves. Target and the nearest zombie are often mistaken for each other. <gasps> That's so good. Oh, That's so good. 
Oh, oh, no. Are you serious? That's so good. Yeah. You think he's Morty? Do you think he's Morty? <laughs> or, well, I don't think you have the big undead creation thing. Oh, yeah, we have a burning zombie. Okay. Don't you we have, have a, a giant, burning zombie as giant well? half fiend? Hor- is that thing still with you guys? The Franken zombie from no, because yeah. He killed it to right. make kind- uh, kindling for the fire. Oh, so, right. What you're going to what you're going to see here is a cross. Uh, sort of. So you you see. Uh, Zoom sort of extend a hand uh, as Aureus reaches out and uh, you you like you cast a spell you cast a spell magic and it sort of lances forward towards the sheep and Zoom sort of steps out and places a hand out and they just these two completely different one like a a light green uh, energy of nature and life uh, meets with a purple and black energy of death and uh we have a almost harry potter ones moment where they lock for a split second mm. um you guys can both uh give me give me a concentration saving throw because um, um this, this is going to cause some gregor gregor is going to oh, say ev- everybody oh just a constitution constitution yeah it's Gregor is going to say, uh, everybody calm down. It's making me nervous. I'm as sweaty as a fisherman at an oyster roast. Let's just, let's just fucking chill. Plague and sheep. We're all okay. friends here. To use any of your magic, Hold on. use it to heal. Zune, um, Orius looks different. Um, Aureus, your house. Uh, it's Appreciate currently it, looking pretty fleek, I'm not going to lie. As um, Aureus kind of possibly may look like you right now. You're a zombie, because Zune is uh, the closest thing to a zombie. Uh, oh. she- yeah. <laughs> so Aureus, the worst thing, that, probably like the worst, this is probably the nail in the coffin for your day. Um, you look like Zune right now. Um, Do we all see that? Yes, everyone sees that. Cast the draws a sword again. <laughs> this is not going well. What the? Hey, if there's any, you know, it's an improvement, I'd say. Can't maybe, no. Just, ah. just to clarify, clothing hasn't changed. You're still wearing all of your normal clothing. Can I please make an arcana roll to possibly, possibly guess what has just happened? Yeah, sure. Okay. Come on, Mag- I think what has happened is you've <laughs> fucked it. You've absolutely fucking cacked it, is what you've done. Um, First so, the sheep, now I've got two sisters. Great. Aureus, uh, yeah. would you like to uh, roll me an arcana or a nature? I have one, because most of your magic comes from nature, so I sort of allow you I'm to... Gonna, I'm going to roll nature, yeah. Yeah. Under 23. Um, you have not... You sort of changed. You're still, you're still Aureus. You know that. You still think like Aureus. You are still you. Uh, you're probably pretty horrified right now. Um, however, it appears to only be sort of like you. You realize like your hands, uh, your feet, uh, sort of like uh, your neck, face, hair have all changed. Um, how best to put this delicately? Underneath clothing, you're still you in all the normal places. Uh, You definitely don't have any undead parts. Um, So that's... uh... Your face looks about as wrinkly as my great-granddad's shriveled ball bag. (laughs) Or is it... Don't ask me how I know know, that. You know the look of your granddad. Don't don't ask me how I know that. Don't ask me that. You don't want to know. I've seen things. So I have no idea how to deduce magically what just happened. No. Um, Aureus, this is, uh, this is potentially something that you can now do. So this is... It will, it will only count for your hands, your face, uh, and stuff. It's not a full transformation, but it is, it's not an illusion. Or I'm, I'm able to discern from the nature rule that, um, I've obviously created some sort of illusion by t- attempting to dispel the magic. That's all my character knows. Yeah. Right. Well, it's it's is more. It... It's slightly more than illusion. It's I your think structure. Your, your face has actually changed structure-wise. Um, uh, like a wild so yeah, shape. 
Yeah, almost, but um, it's <laughs> not uh, like so a doppelganger. Uh, no, no, Louise. no, it is not no. Louise. Stop. Louise, it is not a doppelganger. <laughs> Don't get excited now. Yeah, I mean, you would. You are gonna have to like if I'll, I'll put it to you. I'll, I'll put this in a, a gameplay perspective for you. If you are gonna use this as a thing, um, it has limitations. It's better than an illusion because, uh, for example, if you wanted to, if someone ran their hands through your hair, uh, which is a really p- weird place to go with that, uh, if someone <laughs> ran their hands through your hair, they would feel the hair. The hair is real and everything like that. Uh, they would feel how ridiculously blue it is, uh, which I've, uh, for some reason I've only just noticed. I don't know how I've not noticed that you've had That's blue. okay, you and, and so are both. So exhausted. Um, <laughs> but also, on top of that, you will... You're just you will seeing blue now. <laughs> that it, like, it, your skin tone is going to change drastically uh, beneath sort of like the neck. Uh, so you couldn't wear scantily clad clothing. Wait, wait, if so so, so Gregor, his... Gregor would need to know, does Aureus have boobs? Because Gregor's no. the kind of guy that... Runs those sort of fantasies, which like, if what if I was a girl for a day? Gregor has those ideas. Yeah. What, what, what's it like? Got Gregor. it. Yeah, Gregor has those. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that guy. That guy Will. <laughs> that guy Will has no idea. No, no fantasies. No, nothing. No. Uh, Orius, you... tell me, what's going on down there? You know, man to man, what's going on down is, there? Does my, does, my, does my voice sound the same? Is, am I, is, or is it just an all appearance? Is this, well, what... that, this is this is the interesting thing. How do you feel? Your body has actually changed, which means when you speak in this form, you have the same vocal cords as Zoom, which would mean <laughs> that you have the same voice. Can you do a Laura Lanier impression? <laughs> no. Oh, oh okay. no. Just, just say no. <laughs> Proceed with caution. <laughs> my friend. Caution. I have caution. been I have been down this road, my friend. I've been down this road. <laughs> I've seen where it leads. Need the warning. It is a fucking cold or, sac or my or friend. Is, or is responding to the, uh, to the to the dwarf and, and he and he sounds he sounds like Zoon. He's just like Oh, well wait a minute. I'm the best. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome to my corner of the internet. Orius himself is all things aside. This is okay. So Orius himself, he, he sees this and he notices that his voice sounds like a, a, a woman's voice and this interaction of magic has caused them to um, change appearance physically. But mm. he, he still knows he's he's a man. So, and, but he does he notice that he's like a female? Because I can only see through. No. I, I look over to the, I look over the door. What what are you talking about? You know, like, yeah. you sound <laughs> like men, laddie. Men, men. You sound yeah. like her, and you got all sorts of extra boggly bits where you didn't have boggly bits before. I don't like I, this one bit. This is I, this I, is, I look, this is a personal down. question that I'm going to have to ask. Uh, <laughs> how is Zoom stacked? <laughs> uh, uh, Drow are actually fairly um, large compared to like women, so she would probably yeah. be like a solid C or a D. Because you like, are not. Like, you would have okay. to stuff. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> oh, unfortunate. This is a whole. How does it come to this? <laughs> um, it's Can I roll a D four for breast size. Like, is that how we do this? <laughs> I mean, the things you learn on a, on encounter roleplay. Well, I've actually done D&D a donger um, role. Yeah, play. yeah, we've we've, like we've had to do a donger. Been there before. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, lad, you got you know bits of wobbling that weren't wobbling before. I don't know if you can tell. Um. So mechanically, arrow. First of all, take inspiration. I feel like you might need it in the future. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I kind of want to give this to Arrow, not his character. I, I feel like you <laughs> need it, buddy. <laughs> Wrath uh, is coming. Uh, but also, so this this will work mechanically. This will work as a wild, an optional wild shape. So you can use uh, your wild shape this way uh, to change into sort of mimicking Zoom. Uh, but it is... <laughs> It's like can he, be... can he I say to my sister in Dark Elven, this is how you can double get this between us. I know you're not stupid. All right. So I, I mean, am I able to unchange from this? Is this? It's gonna take you a moment to figure it out, but yeah, you feel it's it's a little, it's less, it's, it's sort of almost trying to isolate individual parts of you to shape back, uh, but yeah, you you can manage it. I, I used to think that you were the normal one. 
I used to think that. Is it going to cost me a wild shape to, to shift back then? Is that no, 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 no. This okay. is this is you breaking wild shape, and you guys haven't had a long. <laughs> time yet, just so you know. Sorry. So, <clears throat> I, to, I tried. To... <laughs> so, so, uh, so Aureus is going to. I don't know what this is, but I think I can change from it. Ah, so, uh, uh, yeah, do that, do that. I hope so. Change it immediately. Not in, not into her like... either. On the point at Kazna, or me, or a sheep. But yeah. Aureus is going to attempt to shift back, uh, knowing that this Please, is some sort of shape shift. Under no circumstances, kill the sheep. It has the plague, which would give the plague to all of us, which is why I did the counter spell in the first place. <sighs> I can't believe I have to say that out loud, but I guess some That's of us don't know how magic works. Let's solve this now. You turn back immediately, and let's kill the fucking sheep already. But if we kill the sheep, then it'll... Ugh, whatever. You know what? Why don't we just tie it to the back of Morty and make it run until it lets go? Uh, you'll hey. notice at this point Morty is very absent. Um... <laughs> he's he's got a thousand yard stare, single tear running down his no, eye. That kind of absent. Yeah, you see uh, constellations. Did you, did you just say the horse's eyes are looking in two different directions? Do you know how an, a horse's. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, 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 no. This is the analog. Let's address Louise's knowledge of the horse. <laughs> I have been taught riding horses for eight years. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They're like beholders, right? Do you know what. Yeah, anyway, so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you go, you guys uh, will look out and you'll see that Morty has vanished. However, we'll cut briefly to a certain Gavin. Now, Gavin, luckily, you have more than a few friends, uh, a lot of whom are scattered and dying. One of them, however, knows where you are. One of them who you actually have been feeding, caring for, and looking after, uh, a certain horse, um, has, while well, the rest of the party been bl blithering on, has spotted that there is someone walking out quite a distance away, and uh, you see in the distance a black horse uh, coming towards you, not stampeding but uh, galloping at quite a, a rate. Uh, yeah, I can do horse talk, Louise. Yeah. Yeah, that terminology. Uh, trotting, okay. trotting Nailed towards it. you. Oh, That's I another word. Best. Yeah, indeed. Main. Uh, cantering. A, can yeah, a, a brisk oh, canter. Tail. Ho ho hooving <laughs> towards you at a considerable uh, It would pace. behoove me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he it comes closer, and as it does, sort of like vision swimming, the yeah. heat of the day starting to break. Um, it's probably at this point that question is going to... Was there something you wanted to ask? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, no, I was basically, yeah, I'm assuming, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I'm delirious or seeing it for real, but heat of the day, so I've taken my cloak and made sure I've covered right. Gwendolyn uh, against the sun as soon as, uh, I meant to ask that about Vincent, I assume that we were still in the shadow of the, yes. uh, of, of the thing of Hex, but yeah, no, uh, absolutely, I would have covered her um, knowing that, you know, sunlight is yeah. no bueno. I'm very much glad you, yeah, because I realized you weren't you weren't sort of aware of the time of day like the others. Yeah, uh, yeah. I you assume since Vincent was them. there, it was yeah. in the in shadow. It's uh, from what you can tell, early morning, uh, about the time you attacked. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, you. Mm, I'm you, moving the wrong way from the shadow this time. Yeah, unfortunately, so um, Morty uh, sort of comes to you, and uh, Morty looks very, very wrong. Oh, Morty, what, what has happened to you? But I think I, I reach up the necrotic hand and just to see if he'll even touch it or allow me to touch his sort of his face so I can bring it yeah. close to mine. Yeah, he, he sort of comes up sort of presses his uh, snout against sort of your face. He doesn't shy away from the no, hand of the Raven Queen. Abs absolutely not. <sighs> perhaps... Perhaps you're in some way one of her returned as well. Is 
here. And I, I sort of give him a once over and notice his wounds, I'm sure. I mean, it's, mm. and you can it's, see ribs, you can yeah. see fresh flesh. Not um, so fresh anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we'll figure out what to do with you later, but I somehow try to load Gwendolyn on to uh, onto Morty. Morty, uh, with a cracking of bone, uh, as Morty doesn't quite work as he used to, uh, he sort of slowly lowers himself down uh, so you can pull Gwendolyn over uh, his flank and you uh, can mount up very wearily. Yeah. And uh, I Morty... all but probably pass out over top of Gwendolyn yeah. and just take us to the others, please. And uh, Morty very gently begins to ride back, uh, taking care not to dislodge you. Um, and yeah, we're back to we're back to strange, strange sheep things. happenings. Strange sheep happenings. Um, you guys uh, have uh, some shelter. It uh, hasn't started to rain, but it looks like it might. Um, it sounds like there's a storm building in the distance. Uh, you all need rest, absolutely, one hundred percent, lutely. Um, as unfortunately you guys were like yeah no i'm gonna sleep and then zoom was like i'm just gonna go run an errand real quick and came back with a sheet sure uh, so we need to run up. yeah we um, have an hour on the polymorph spell as was pointed out so we need to make a decision about the sheet before we go to bed <laughs> before we do uh i i always make sure that um before bed i i make sure if i have sheep i count them just to be sure but i've never made it to the end Okay. Oh, really? Yes, I... You are not a funny man, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, take a death saving throw, Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the eternal sleep. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we got a fucking sheep. The sheep is fucking plagued. You reckon if we kill the sheep, the plague will go everywhere? So we need to get the sheep to fuck off. Sheep, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> The, the sheep flinches. Small, small infinitesimal chance that when the polymorph spell ends within an hour, there will be no more plague. Other but that, we, we don't know about that, though. Burn the body. So, but even if he is plagued, it's just a fucking man. Do we, like, uh, do we need him? Yes. Who even is this man? You mentioned it was some wood elf. Yeah, some, some fucking tree licky guy. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember his name. Well, he's clearly uh, not important. Let's throw him off the cliff. Yeah, I think I'm the only person who met him face to face. Unfortunately, yes. For him. Well, let's just throw him off the cliff. You would have to get him back to the top of the cliff up 400 feet, just so you know. I I admire your enthusiasm, <laughs> but you like, will have to get him. <laughs> We're going for a walk. <laughs> do you have any type of cure disease spell, Wood? I do not take requests from you anymore, wench. <laughs> They also seem to think that, uh, you know, demon plague doesn't get cured by stuff like that. I don't know. Hey, the sheep can't walk uh, much, can he? Um, we have a perfectly good fire right here. Well, it's just let's a burn fire. Him alive? All right, let's burn him. I gotta we grab are him. not murdering <laughs> this man. We are not murdering this man. Absolutely not. He is dead already. Well, he has the plague. They, in die. many ways, so are you guys. Uh, very much dead, at least on the inside. Uh, I don't know if we need to kill him. Can't we just leave him here and then we can fuck off? Make another fire. Okay. Uh, here's the thing, though. Did you, uh, Zune, did you piss him off? Be honest. How much did you fuck him off? When I'm he was... assuming a lot. What, sister? I'm completely <laughs> wonderful. I, I mean... When he shot me, I think he should be thankful. So he shot you, so you fucked him off enough for him to shoot you. Yes, he caught me in one of my necromantic experiments, and he didn't understand, and I tried to explain it to a small infinitesimal Oh, yeah, no perfect. one understands. Oh, right. oh, dear, oh, that dear. That makes perfect sense. I'm, I understand. No, that happens to me all the time, you know, when I'm <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, yeah, um, so... I propose we burn the sheep alive. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> aye. Aye. I, I, I continue to make Scottish noises for some amount of time. 
Hey, you, you, ooh, ha. That's how you get get a Scotsman to agree with you. Just all, all hey. they say I, and you will just involuntarily <laughs> say I. make Scottish noises. Um, I agree. I, I guess if if that's the plan, then as long as it doesn't get too plaguey round here, you know, I don't want all that plague. Okay. Or, or a sheep, if you understand me, bleat once. Thank you for your indulgence. It doesn't bleep. It doesn't bleep. bleep. No, bleat, unfortunately. Well, look, he won't it, even it feel it. He really saying. can't understand. It's understood body language so far, which was mostly Gregor being aggressive, Zoom being someone who did a terrible thing to him, and everyone else is just talking gobbledygook. Well, here's it's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm yeah. thinking. If he comes back to life as normal werewolf and he was fucked off enough to shoot you once, means we're going to have to kill him anyway. No, exactly. Besides, he clearly does not understand what's going on. It'll be... Painless I mean, he is a fucking <laughs> sheep right now, Kazna. Like, literally a sheep. So... Well, all the more reason we should kill him right now, before he's not a sheep anymore. Actually, if you kill him and drop him to, um, to death, he'll actually revert to his original state. Well, then we'll burn him again. That's why I'm saying we should tie him up now and burn him and then continue to burn him. Uh, you're, 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 <laughs> okay. just so, your fire isn't actually a fire. Your fire is a small pit with lava in it. Because well, it was made by lava. it was that made by the, lava, then. it okay. was made by a fucking lunatic f molten breather. Okay, well I, I go over with my sister to pick up the shit by his legs and put it in the lava. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, as you as you go over to pick it up, Orius, <laughs> Orius wild shapes into a a, a giant eagle. Bad and boy, he, this is not. He's going, time. he's going to attempt to snatch the sheep he's with his take claws. The sheep <laughs> Uh, uh, Fly into the sunset. <laughs> I love or, you, or, or sheep or drop man. The sheep. <laughs> Orius is going to attempt. He's going to wild shape into uh, a giant eagle, and he's going to attempt to grasp the sheep from Zoon and fly into the air. Um, how long does it take to do that? Because he could potentially turn into an eagle, fly, and grab it before we're even like we're just approaching the sheep. He could do yeah, it. Yeah, no. As, as soon as you see you're going to kill, Izzy sees you're going to burn the sheep in the lava pit. Here's this, then, <laughs> Without it's saying a word. Fucking eagles are coming. <laughs> so glad you prepped a whole episode about how to deal with one sheep. Does this, Josh. Does this <laughs> remind you of any other episodes of Dead Things, Shut Josh? Shut up. <laughs> I, will, I will murder you dead with your own. I will just have lava spill from your pores. Um, <laughs> cart, okay. Aureus, Aureus sees this as a being being a kind of a neutral, almost neutral, good character. He sees this as a as an ally, one's ally. And yeah. see, Dune is trying to murder this person, so he's going to try to save the sheep. <laughs> I, I really, he, he doesn't, he doesn't even sure if Zune's telling the truth. So yeah, despite despite the fact that I know for sheep. a fact that it actually happened, I love the idea that Zune just found the sheep, brought it down, and was like, let me fuck with the guys. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do, Druid? <sighs> You know, no. it's I times like it's so times like these so that actually miss Gavin. <laughs> right, 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 guys, guys, guys. So you guys actually speaking to Gavin, Gavin, you're gonna see a sign from the gods potentially as you see a sheep clutched oh, in a giant hallelujah. eagle. Oh, oh, just sort of like hallelujah. hazily you glance up and all you see is this floating above. Whatever you want to interpret that as a sign of, my friend. Be my guest. The end times. Um, the end. Is I'm obviously far more injured than I than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not well. <laughs> the loss of blood is apparently oh, really. My character Zune is cackling as well because that's just comical. I mean, he's gonna take the sheep and do something with it. It's not my fucking problem anymore. I wasn't looking forward to it anymore. I was looking forward to burning it in the lava, dear sister. I mean, I I, I did Next mention time. I did mention he does unnatural things of animals. Perhaps he's having a druid circle. A, a druid party, we call yes. it. I'm going to get some rest then. Right. And, uh, go and make a spot to go into the I'm place. glad you can sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's drow Christmas, of course we can. <laughs> right. Um, We're up all night unwrapping presents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or people, you know. It's. Uh, uh, I'll take the first watch then. Cool. Uh, so, I'm I'm currently in the air. What do I see in the air? Or am I because my, my goal is to be, I just I just kind of took off in the air. Do mm. fields of sheep. As far as the eye can see. Uh, you will see far in the distance. Uh, far in the distance, 
to the west there are the black mountains uh, of the dwarven kingdoms uh you are right by the cliffside so it's about 20 mile trek uh back to the mountains from here um the camp below you is just fucking trashed uh there's still fires sort of flickering in places around uh around the um the the main command tent itself uh which has been blown apart uh looks like it's just been set on fire and has burnt down a long time ago um there are bodies uh that are littered around not many from what you can see and then there's just a graveyard in the distance that you dragged yourself from and uh behind that is the uh the mountain with am the- i able to d- discern gavin at all is um you will absolutely be able to see that there I is a single him. uh a single figure uh on horseback riding very slowly out of the waste towards the camp that you've I'm, I'm going to, seeing this um, with the sheep, I'm going to actually start flying towards that figure um, <laughs> to observe. <laughs> so Gavin, giant bird and sheep approach. Morty looks a little spooked, to be frank. Uh, you so are you and- observing from hi- up high, or are you like flying at us? I, I'm just, I'm hovering from above. I don't want to come straight at you. I want, I'm, I'm observing. I don't, right, okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's only, so basically what you look up and you see a bird of prey maintaining flight just above you, gliding on the wind. That's not disconcerting at all. That's yeah. not in, in any way how eagles kill things. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, Gavin at this point yeah. probably is just going to, knowing he is all but dead, you know, just mutter a you know, a prayer of reflection um, uh, to St. Cuthbert, assume, you know, at this point thinking, yeah, this is the vultures coming. I mean, I'm on a dead horse, half dead myself with a, you know, a vampire uh, out in the middle of the sunlight. This is, and I've heard, well, I've heard that I've fallen out of favor with the Raven Queen um, from Vincent and that this might be her final uh judgment fallen upon me so i just uh i think good thoughts <laughs> is, is close enough to read the lips of of gavin because uh, i want to because i, I want to hover above him uh flying obviously but i'm able to am i able to read his, perceive his lips from the distance i am Should i'm be- gonna i'm gonna say like his face is pretty mashed up you can see he's talking speaking um, but he, uh, yeah, I sort of see me like leaned over yeah. almost like just holding on yeah, to the neck yeah. of Morty. I mean, it's, it's if I was um, able to even look up, it was probably I saw your shadow and then was yeah. just like put my it head un- back down and just in. I still have un- hope. Gavin still has hope because he always does, but he, yeah, he is yeah. wondering if his time has, has finally come. Has finally um, come. You will, you'll be able to make out that it is Gavin. Gavin's, uh, hard man to misplace even in a even in this chaos and it's most definitely the horse um that you've sort of become familiar with in the last hour or so uh you don't recognize there's definitely a body or a corpse or something draped over the back of the horse uh the horse is a little skittish um and is now not going in a straight line is now sort of circling trying to look up but can't or is just going to start a, a nosedive straight down at at Gavin, and as Horse I approach panics. him, as as I approach him, I'm going to circle and attempt to uh, land, and I'm going to draw the sheep as gracefully as I possibly can. Uh, this is going to end well. I'm going to, and then I'm going to stay. And the sheep it. breaks its neck and dies, and then turns. <laughs> and then you get the idea. I'm going to stay in, in this bird form, but I'm going to um, see Gavin's reaction to all this. Gavin, a huge bird has just landed near you. A sheep has just vomited what looks like uh, some food or something. Um, sheep get get nauseous when you when you fly them. Sheep aren't accustomed to flying at high speed and nosedive bombing uh, on on top of horses. It it gets them a little riled up. Um, actually, I did. He was invisible when he was in eagle form before. I just followed the raven, so I don't know that he does eagle form. No. Um, Gavin, um, sort of half 
dismounts, half falls off of the back of uh, Morty and gives Morty a swat on the rump and says, just get her to the trees. And he tries to you know, lift the maul of the Raven Queen and defend himself being half delirious. He doesn't know whether it's an eagle, a you, trike, a dragon, yeah. a, a, it, it's something that I suddenly was more interesting than whatever food it had gotten. And still my, my thing is just get Gwendolyn to the yeah. trees. Morty, so that, Morty is going to bolt at, okay. at your command um, and goes straight round Aureus and at full canter is, I mean, 50, 50, no, 100, yeah, 100 feet around is, yeah, he's, Morty can move. Uh, so Morty having like no obstacles to stop him other than you is going to just zip around you. Um, you have Gavin in front of you. Gavin, you cannot stand. Um, I'm going to tell you right okay. now, you are not going to be able to stand. You were on one hit point. You are exhausted. Uh, you yeah. have, you've not eaten in quite some time. You've not had any water in quite some time. You are, you can sort of prop yourself up on the mace. Uh, you may take no actions. You may okay. speak, but that's it. This is it, buddy. Yeah. So, Eero, now you can reveal that you're actually playing an evil character and fuck all. Yeah, and <laughs> this was how you were going to do it all. This is how you were going to do it all along. Yeah. I'm actually the main bad guy of the campaign. Surprise. Yeah. yeah oh, no, um, no, I, Oris is just going to uh, un, unshape shift. Uh, so I see him. He falls to the ground. He's obviously wounded. I'm able yeah. to do that. Um, seeing this, I'm going to immediately unshape shift and uh, reveal myself. And say uh, and tell him take take heed, friend. I, I I saw him send off the horse, right? Yeah. I know that he's, yep. he's concerned. I I mean no harm. It, I'm your companion, Aureus. I saw you from afar while trying to save this uh, polymorphed man by the terrible wizard that I wish not to speak of. But, but I saw you from the distance, and I decided to just investigate. You seemed like an ally. I. Uh he just uh i guess at this point he just crumbles to his knees um and uh i'm gonna say passes out i mean he's either you know he, he's either saved or doomed yeah and uh you know just looks up he sort of tries to smile and um uh, i think probably the last thing on his word on his lips is uh is just uh, you know, to the trees because that was what was on his mind. So, Aureus, you just watch as Gavin, uh, he sort of like manages to look up and smile and uh, then he slumps forward and he impacts the ground, kicks up like a load of this white chalky salt that cakes him. Uh, he's not pale from just that, he's pale from blood loss uh he's he's a genuinely dying like not i'm able to discern sort of, this yeah. yeah this is this is not the sort of thing you know oh just have a long rest that he will probably die if he isn't seen to right i've uh, or is going to approach him and sees that he's dying i'm going to attempt to cure his wounds and cast cure wounds on him okay uh, i'm going to touch him and cure wounds to see if i can revitalize him at all absolutely cast that level one Okay, so um, Gavin, despite being unconscious, is going to wince as uh, he he uh, starts to heal, um, and you see fresh blood start to spill out from underneath his form. He's sort of laying slumped on his front, um, and yeah, he starts to stain the ground with uh, with fresh blood. Like you can feel energy pouring into him, life force pouring into him, and almost immediately starting to leave is he still unconscious uh yeah he's he's muttering but um he it looks like he has something he's either taken a wound to his front somewhere that is leaking quite badly or you're not really sure i'm able to discern that uh he's 
is he still going to die? Is he, is he bleeding enough to the point? I, I mean, what is my character able to discern? I mean, you, you've given him, roll me a medicine check to see yeah. what your best, best estimation on sort of how long he's got. On a 17, uh, probably about 30 minutes with uh, what you've done before he's pretty much unrecoverable. Uh, you probably bought him 10 minutes. Um, if you want to, I mean, I guess, are you examining his body, I presume, on a second? Right, after, after yeah. I cast a, a low level of cure wounds, I, I just turned to see what his wounds are like after that. I'm going to, uh, seeing that he's still very wounded, I'm going to, I've left for spell slots, I haven't rested. Before, before you do anything, I will tell you now, um, if you roll, you roll him on to his back to sort of check his wounds, uh, his, the front of his armor has caved in. And uh, as you try to heal him, the flesh has come up to and has just started to try and heal around shredded metal and immediately been torn open. As much wow. blood, you got to get him out of his armor, um, and you got to get him somewhere to get him clean because he's got all manner of dirt and grime. And I mean, this place is full of sickness. He needs he needs to be somewhere safe. Uh, you probably need to get him back to the the camp at the very least. Yeah, seeing the extents of his wounds, I have another wild shape left. Um, before I, I wild shape, I'm going to um, cast a guidance on myself. Okay, cool. And, and I I'm, presume your wild shape to, into Zoom. I'm going to wild shape into. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I can see it now. Ah, it's me. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Lolf, <laughs> Lolf donates five pounds to give a wild magic search to Arrow. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's strange. Oh, <laughs> come on. Was it 1D, 1D oh, 10,000? Hmm. I wonder who could have possibly done that. Goodness me, lol. What are you oh. up to? On this merry drow Christmas, she's giving us gifts even now. Even now. Oh, mm -hmm. gotta love, gotta love drow Christmas. <laughs> um, okay, two, what is it? Two, one, eight, one. Uh, I'll we'll look that up for you. No, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, two one eight one. Two eight one eight. Oh, two eight one eight. Yeah. Okay. How many numbers? Two eight one eight. Um. <laughs> uh. You are turned to stone, and we both died. <laughs> <laughs> well, oops, that sucks. Well, shit. Oh, oh God! How am I? How's that gonna? <laughs> Oh god. Oh, it's never good. <laughs> oh god, no! <laughs> okay. Um I tell you what, let me let me just see how I can play flavor this. You have uh Do you, right, first first question. Um does Aureus currently have a ring on? Uh no, he does not. He does not wear metallic Druid uh, for basically don't Indeed. do that. Indeed. Okay, in which case literally for in every right i'm gonna have to in an in unprecedented fashion i will have to ask for a reroll. i'm afraid uh simply sure. just will not work it just won't work for a yeah. okay thank you <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> anyway uh, no time. it's just yeah uh and why didn't you get 666 that would have been amazing 604. okay 604 is uh <laughs> It's literally... What is it with rings? Yeah, I know! I know! Oh, damn it. Um, Roll it again! Uh, again it's like and again! The third time on, like, you spin the wheel. <laughs> Can, you Can you get a triple? Can you get a triple? Thank you, Bombard. Okay. Appreciate it, brother. It's like, a, it's like a slot machine. If he gets free, free ring ones, he wins it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Drow Santa donates 10 pounds. Two wild magic surges. One for Zune. One for Kazna. Merry Drow Christmas to one and all. Merry and to Drow all Christmas a good death. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Drow Merry Santa. Merry Drow Christmas. Give me, give me, uh, all a good give death. me those rolls as I try and figure out the <laughs> how I'm going to work. You can this. always take the nearest one. I've done that before. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just looking at the nearest one. They're all very... Uh, okay, so... We'll just pick a random one from the list. Here. <laughs> okay. Um... Exactly, Sphere. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Aureus. Um... 
Oh, fuck me. I've got free wild magic surges from Urban. Fuck me. <laughs> 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 okay, god damn. Fuck okay, my... right, right. Okay, give me give me one sec. So, fuck so my I'll, beard. <laughs> and I'll get I'll get to the others in a second. But Aureus, um, this is going to become sort of a compulsion. Uh, maybe it's to become more in tune with nature. Maybe it's to uh, sort of bring yourself closer to it. But for, for, some, for some reason, uh, Target, uh, Caster, um, can't eat any food that doesn't contain a handful of soil. Okay. Then, Getting close sure. to nature. Indeed. There's no, plant, there's no plants out there's no plants there's out no here. There's no soil here. I, this is a dead uh, there's, I mean, no, you could dig below sort of like the uh, the hard baked crust and find sort of earth to a degree. Don't don't give me that look score. Right. Uh, <laughs> so worry. we have start off with uh, Laura. So seven three seven zero. Oh my god, this is so good for me. I'm terrified of uh, which has really spooky ones. Okay, 7370 reads. That's no, not a good um, one. Like... I'm going to. I'm going to keep hold of that and I'm not going to tell you what that is. Yep. You no, wanna... it's, it's the next one. That's the crazy one. Um... I'm, not, I'm not reading. I don't want to know. Nobody posted in chat. I love yeah. these kinds of things in DD. So... 6193 uh, for good old Louise. Uh, Louise, you're a veteran of this. You know how it goes. It always, uh, <laughs> it always goes really well, is I've, how it goes. I've just looked at my free and they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, that's amazing. 6193. Right? Target is shunned by all that is holy. <laughs> Merry Drow Christmas. Merry Drow Christmas. Yes. It's all a good death. Holy shit. Hello, Louise. My, <laughs> my, my free. And you. Nice. Yeah, well, no, I'm not holy. I'm not a cleric. My worst is not, you know. So I rolled <laughs> two, four, five, one. Caster's voice sounds like the braying of donkeys. <laughs> which so is a good now. way to describe a Scottish <laughs> accent, isn't it? And there you go. <laughs> Tomorrow, Caster meets his long lost and malevolent twin. Oh, it's Ooh. you, Billy. Uh, Yay! It is. And then free free forty next spell to hit the caster renders him blind for its duration. <laughs> so when I meet my br long lost and malevolent brother twin, when you cast a spell on me, I will go blind from it. So <laughs> fucking funny, brilliant. Twins. I don't know. We're not twins. Okay, we're <laughs> no, no, unfortunately. We're yeah, twins okay. at heart. Yeah, indeed. You're twins with Aureus. It's the heart apparently. of darkness, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is an interesting way of forming bonds between the party. So far, we've got Gavin, who now hates Kazna. I will actually become you, is what Aureus is doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to be like, more like you, so I will literally be <laughs> you. <laughs> Aureus, Aureus has got the uh, the mocking down. Like, he's so salty about Zoom, just, just everything. He can now mimic her to the point of like, oh, my name's Zoom, and I can... Yeah, it's wonderful. Zoom. I wonder um, what it's like to be in your skin for one day. I will literally be in your skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, this is this is fun. So, um, oh, fucking God brilliant! Uh, this is great. This is a great drow Christmas. To one it's the all. best, the best <laughs> drow Christmas. Um, so yeah, fuck um, me. You are going to try and bring back uh, Gavin to the fold, I presume. Correct. I am. Going... He's going to be really happy to see me. <laughs> I, I'm going to, seeing that he's bleeding and, and dying, yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to cast Guidance on myself. I'm also going to cast, good thing I prepared this. I knew there was, there was when, when we're out here, where is this? Come here. I gotta go to my spell page one sec. It is Long Strider, and that's going to help me move faster. And that lasts for an hour. And it's not required concentration. So I'm going to turn into a animal that moves fast. Let's see what I have here for my um, character sheet. My character knows what to turn into. He would know how to turn into an elk. Um, he would indeed. So I am going to turn into an elk, and uh, I'm going to kind of put him on my back so that when I shapeshift, he'll be yeah, on my back so the, the, and uh, hopefully through use of guidance, I, I'll be able to do that better so i'll shape shift into an elk and start heading back towards the area of the camp with the very sick and dying gavin on my back indeed 
So uh, you guys, you guys come sort of towards the. Uh... And the sheep is still there. <laughs> they just left the sheep. <laughs> Thank you so much, producer. I, like, it's, yeah, I appreciate awesome. it. I hope he's having a great day. <laughs> the sheep. He's gonna think twice. He's gonna come back yeah. in like ten episodes. It's like the end boss or something. The sheep doesn't follow, but he's he's gonna it's gonna become permanent. Like he is still a sheep, but he retains all the wood elf statistics. Has a wow. bow somehow. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> With wool and string. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. So, um, thank you to Medusa with the bag on her head, who just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Yeah, thank Twitch Prime. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you will, you guys can reunite. You'll see just Gavin down that uh, Gavin comes in on the back of a giant elk. Um, where he got that from, you know, who fucking knows? Ah, uh, how the fuck he, is he alive? Is he alive, or is he another one of your sheep? So as I, I, I come out of reverie and yeah, we went, get up like, oh, what? what? Hey, stop what? wanking over your drove Christmas. It's <laughs> Gavin's back. What? He's alive. Uh, oh, I owe you some money. For uh, oh, uh, <laughs> we'll collect that. We'll collect that I, I say, I, uh, for a while. Um, uh, Aureus, is that you? And, uh, at, at this point, the fucking animals could be fucking anyone. <laughs> And I do mean fucking anyone. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to do that to you at one point. Just have like <laughs> Gregor walk off into the sunset with like a horse thinking it's Aureus. And then Aureus just come out of the tavern like, guys, where the fuck is he going? Just like, Aureus, I've always liked you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're okay. <laughs> Running his hand through his mane. Not familiar with the surface creatures. Is this native to this area? Uh, uh, no. Can we put Aureus, this in the fire as well? Aureus uh, goes down to his, uh, his... I guess he kind of lays down and shuffles um, Gavin off of his back, and then he begins to shapeshift back into himself. Oh, joy of joy, it's Bird Boy. <laughs> He's back. Uh, well, how was dinner? What? I kind of look around in amazement. I look down at I look down at Gavin. And I said, "Our companion is dying, and you worry about food." Oh, yeah. oh I thought he was oh. dead already. I see. So this is, uh, you know, I, one step better. I can bring him back to life, but that's all I can do. Uh, I, I don't really have much medicine, um, or yeah. any actually. All I can do is throw up magma. I mean, I will say, like Gregor, you probably had to pulled stuff out of men before. Uh, oh, no, I have. Let's not talk about that. The things I've had to pull out of men in my day. You've never pulled out once. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so exhausted at this point. I am allowed to make those jokes. So, yeah, no, you... Um, I mean, you probably have had to perform basic triage on uh, Fred, but certainly, I mean... I presume, like... Just on friends. I don't, I don't, <laughs> want, to, I don't want to assume... I don't want to be racist towards dwarves, but are you, do you know, sort of, like, you're wearing some pretty resplendent armor. Uh, yeah, is I, I, I do, I do know some medicine, so I could do, like, a field dressing kind of thing. Yeah, well, you would recognize that it's actually his armor that is probably killing him at this point. Oh, okay, you, then, yeah. You need um, to get it off. Like, or, uh, Aureus, Aureus, regardless, will say, is his, his, I attempted to cure his wounds, but the armor which was pierced as I, his flesh, and uh, I cannot close the wound. We need to rip it off. Um, and uh, not for the first time, uh, Gregor will rip off, or attempt to rip off some armor uh, from the fallen Gavin to try and, yeah. uh, you know. So Gavin, Gavin's unconscious, and uh, you start uh, derobing him, sort of like finding his muscle chest beneath. Uh, it's sort of, he's hot, he's sweaty, uh, and sort of like, you managed to. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, uh. I'll check the wow, wow. We got we got the necrophiliac, I'm sorry, necromancer. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's a party. She's tried everything once. I was gonna say, um, they, they lost, you lost the sheep and came yeah. back with Gavin. Great. Because all of us have changed found a bear. in some way while the dwarf is doing this, I actually want to stand and look over top and see if I... I didn't really know Gavin that well anyways, but I want to see if he's been magically altered in any way. Um, you can, uh, you can have a look. Um, the 
thing you will notice, uh, Gregor will notice this uh, instantly, is uh, he has stuck to his chest uh, a ring of feathers uh, that are black and soaked through with blood um, that form sort of like around his chest. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, give me give me an arcana to see if you can... Uh, Will a 21 suffice? A 21? I mean, you, you didn't have much time to study Gavin before, mm -hmm. but um, Gavin... So you uh, the only reason you're going to understand uh, or have an inkling of what this might be is because you recently had a traumatic experience of similar proportions and you know how to sense a soul. Um, I also just want to point out that I have an eight specialization in religion as well. Arcana and religion is like my character's two things. So okay, cool. that help out at all? Uh, it's, well, it sort of my it's you the 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 thing that you will notice immediately is you almost register um two life forms uh it's almost as if gavin is two people we got multiple um, life forms indeed uh check your targets uh enemies could be hiding as sheep tango's down um, tango down so, oh, i don't know uh, why i'm so, so fucking tired as well just so, inane so fucking bullshit you will <laughs> You will, uh, you will be silent, Will, and um, we will. Copy yeah, that. You, you sense that uh, there's more to Gavin than just Gavin at the moment. Um, there are two souls uh, currently inhabiting his body. I very much so want to pluck the ring of thread that comes from his chest. Uh, it's coming off with the armor. Um, it's being t like pulled off. It's uh, set. You don't sense any magic there but they have the afterglow of something it's like something was performed a ritual of some sort uh on his chest around this wound uh and it is i mean gavin's a big fellow so i the mean he's got thing a... i can think about this is like a phylactery cell so something's containing a soul inside of that he is the vessel and carrying it for some purpose that would be a uh, apt sort of thing to jump towards yeah he uh what you will be able to tell i mean because gavin's fucking benched as hell he has a really deep <laughs> wound on his chest however because of the amount the sheer amount of muscle he has it's not you're not entirely sure if it's gone through to as deep as his heart um it's a mess uh there's sort of already the uh the black uh mottled uh color of coagulating blood that's built up in in the wound it's uh, very unclean uh it's currently caked in in salt and dirt um but uh yeah it appears that gavin um gavin is a very split man at this particular moment um and you can't tell them apart you know they're both there uh, you don't know if they're both gavin or if one of them is something else uh it's impossible to tell. This guy is built like a house made of men that are big as him. <laughs> Descriptive. Be careful with the ring of feathers. I say, and I go back and I sit down and I wait for him to revive. You can, uh, yeah, you pull this arm off and I mean, he, G Gavin is uh, pretty beaten. His skin is... Uh, <laughs> pretty much bruised from head to toe he has cuts everywhere he uh he looks like he had a pretty hard fight and uh it took a lot to bring him down but he's definitely been brought down and yeah he definitely needs healing of some sort so whoever wants to give it a crack it's up to you guys uh with magic with triage anything you fancy uh i'll roll a medicine check uh give me give me a medicine check no oh, he's dead uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, lad. Sorry. Uh, actually, Will, you'll remember this one uh, from a different campaign that we once ran together. You basically need to figure out how deep that wound on his chest is. So you just put your finger in the hole, just to see how deep that wound is, sort of how far before you meet bone. And uh, you feel this sharp edge of uh, what is definitely shattered bone in there somewhere. Uh, oh, he's got bones in him. Again, oh, gonna no. have to put them out. Man, guys, 
relax, everyone stay calm, but I believe there Even this man may lightning. have bones in him. <laughs> he has oh a skeleton Honestly, I thought skin. he might have just been pure muscle. Uh, okay, um, well, there's bones where there shouldn't be bones, is what I'm saying, and they're stuck in places, and, you know, I've, as I mentioned, I've got some experience in pulling things out of men. Uh, bones are one of them. Uh, but this one's in at an awkward angle, and, uh... I don't really want to go fishing round there, you know, like a just like a drunken push, seaman. Push Trek off to the <laughs> side, and um, she'll try med medicine while she's still talking. Cool. And also do worse. Uh, <laughs> so like, you well. you you push to the side, <laughs> mostly mostly because you realise that the man is probably going to be killed by Gregor's giant fat sausage fingers <laughs> rooting around in his uh. chest cavity. Um, but unfortunately not really sure of the wound yourself. I mean, you've seen wounds like this. You'd condemn this man as a dead man, especially if he was one of yours. I mean, if one of yours got He's a dead man. like a paper cut, you'd probably leave him to die. They're lunatics. We did what we could. He's dead. Let's move on. Morius, without saying a word, walks up to uh, Gavin's very wounded body and he casts Greater Restoration. And uh, in order to mend the bone, so anything that would affect uh, his maximum hit points would be healed, which I would assume is the bone. Uh, I'm going to guess. I'm yeah, to guess it's, well, it's it's not just the bone; it's the sheer exhaustion from it all. And he's been through something that uh, he well, he has no concept of what he's been through, but he's been through an ordeal as well as the battle. Right, and greater restoration like removes the level of exhaustion, if that counts as anything. Um, okay. Um, I will point out, I, this is fine for now, but you uh, guys are going to need to start worrying about components for healing, because okay. uh, you need to uh, unfortunately have a hundred gold pieces worth of diamond dust for that. But, as so much craziness has happened, and otherwise Gavin might literally die, this once, I will say that Thanks. that's something you could bring, you could bring with you from the past. Does he not have an arcane focus? No, no, it's uh, an it's actual component. Yeah. This is a specific yeah, component somewhere. on greater Specific, restoration. Yeah, specifically, if if you if it requires something that has a value to it marked, you have to have that thing. And for huh. some, you have this to have would, a new one every time. This would be a situation where I would attempt to pull something from the void for the component. Uh, but okay, that's okay. I have yeah. the mechanics. I haven't. So I haven't. Okay. Seen. So right, this is interesting. Knowing knowing. Knowing this, um, I'm going to, if you're going to allow me to attempt to pull this reagent from the void uh, with my new knowledge, I'm going to um, cure wounds again, but at a higher level. I'm going to do okay. this at level just to keep him stable. I know okay. I don't want him to die. Probably bring him back um, to life with a greater cure wounds. I'm going to cast this at level two. Yeah, he's good to go. I mean, he's, yeah, he's stabilized. There's no way, like, the psychological stress that has been upon him he's not conscious but uh he he looks like he's the the wound starts to mend but um yeah if you want to try and sort of repair the the underlying damage which is gonna i mean this is this is the sort of thing that yeah you could heal him back from it but this is this is a wound that you would carry for some right time. i, I want to attempt to greater restore this wound seeing okay. as here it is Right, so with regards to that, how long are you going to spend? Um, there is, you can spend between one and ten minutes casting this. You're under no real time constraints at the moment. Uh, and you roll a d100, and it is your level plus uh, whatever you are trying to roll beneath. Uh, so so uh, it's your level plus however many minutes uh, that you've spent casting it. So if you want to do it quick snap in a, in a pinch, you got to roll D uh, 100 and get below your level, uh, similar to div uh, Divine Intervention. The longer you spend, the easier it is to do. Uh, right. And name what it is you're trying to bring forth. Right, I'm, I'm going to try to bring forth a component for this. I'm going to bring uh, forth uh, a small diamond, a very small diamond, enough to uh, a dust. At yeah. least enough for the spell. I would assume I know how to discern that. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, so I'm going to bring up an, enough of this diamond from the void. I'm going to spend the full 10 minutes uh, doing that. So you want okay. me to roll a D100? D100, you're looking to get below 20, my friend. Okay. Oof. Nope. 72. Uh, so I'm able to pull it. So sitting there 10 minutes, I was able to, not able to pull that. 
No, unfortunately not. You uh, you feel the connection. You feel it there, but it's almost as if you found a, uh, a sort of a box that you don't know how to open, like a puzzle box. Uh, you can sense what you need is within, uh, along with an infinite number of great things and terrible things. Uh, but Pandora's box does not open for you, as uh, would be a good analogy. Um, so yeah, you you know you have that kind of uh, wrestle with it. Um, it's uh, it's not the most pleasant feeling uh, being in touch with this, but at the same time, there is a sense of kind of balance to it. I mean, there is no light or dark. There's no good or evil. It is the most neutral of all neutral uh, because it is nothing. Uh, whether or not that would give you any comfort whatsoever, or is this a personal decision to make? But uh, all, all of this, I think, is just washing over Gregor's head because he's not learning any of this stuff. Um, yeah, no. Do you think he's going to be all right? It looks like he's, I don't know, struggling like a dwarven virgin. Or he's <sighs> just sat in the court, sat over by a rock for ten Sweaty minutes. Sweaty nervous. <laughs> did nothing, and he, he, he comes. He turns around and he says, "I attempted to commune with the void." Which I had visited before. Like you do, I, I, yeah. was to, I was, I was unable to pull out anything of usefulness to maybe restore this man's wounds. But he seems to be stable. Hopefully, he will awake soon. Um, can you give me a quick medicine check, uh, Aureus? As sure. uh, yeah. We... Oof. On a twenty-four. Um. There is one other thing. As uh, beaten as bloody as Gavin may be, um, Gavin doesn't just look like uh, a man who is injured. Gavin has sores, and they're not sores from armor grating or anything like that. He has sort of what looks like the beginning of a uh, build-up of pus, small little spots that have built up, and you've only noticed this because you've had to tear, like, his armor off and then sort of uh, the undergarments that uh, protect him. Um, Gavin has the plague. And on a 24, if Gavin has the plague, there is every chance that you all have it because you have to be out there for a certain amount of time to get it. But if you've all been out there longer than you realize, there's a chance you were all infected. God damn it. Do we all know that? Or Aureus, Aureus realizing this, uh, I, I know this. Okay, I'm, Aureus. I'm actually, gonna, I'm actually going to uh, motion the dwarf over. I'm going to try to do it as as, hey. as, as possible. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, I believe we may all, I believe our companion here has been infected with some sort of plague much. I don't think that the, the uh, draw was lying when she said that the man she sheeped was plagued and was infected with it. I, I believe that this is the truth and there is a plague upon these lands and our fuck. friend Gavin here has it and we may be infected. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, we are. And I, I look, I look over my shoulder. I said, don't, keep this between us. Don't tell the drows. We are fucked like a choir boy on Pentecost. <sighs> fuck, 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 fuck. Um... F- no, that's it. Fuck. Oh, fuckity. Fuck, fuck, Can fuckity. I roll up perception to just to hear... Like, <laughs> it's just like, like, a, it's just, like it's just a series of expletives that'll go into very um, colourful... Um, I genuinely don't feel like there's any need. There's a giant <laughs> yeah, brain. I, I am not a oh, uh, yeah, subtle right. man. That's true. <laughs> the loudest Kazza donkey. Just kind of turns around and just like, um, anything to share with the class? <laughs> Home like a donkey too. Uh, eh, you know, I was just look, looking around. Yes. Um, and, yes. and you know, I just realized how fucked we are. Um... Uh, Aureus, do you want to tell them or shall I? Because they're going to find out one way or another. Find out what, exactly? Uh, uh, well, he reckons that there's a playground in these parts and that this one, I point at Gavin, has got it, which means that we've probably got it too. Right, and 
the goal was to keep such imperative information from companions. Is that right, bird boy? Hey, don't worry about the bird boy. He's just looking after your fucking feelings, okay? Not that you fucking oh, have any. Ah. I worry not what happens to you, you or your sister. Your perverted evil ways interest me not. Mate, yeah, I was trying to fucking wingman you. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, he doesn't give a fuck about you neither. Uh, it's just that you're sneaky and fuck around and so we wanted to do a bit too. But fuck! Uh, anyone got any plague cure uh, or anything? Uh, as a dwarf, you'd know uh, the only, pretty much the only people who've ever really been any good at curing it have been your people, actually. Well, you know right. what? This ain't so bad. Because it gives us just yet another reason to go see my people. Because we're the best at curing plagues ever. In fact, my people There's got a natural hardiness to it, so I reckon you're, you're all are fucked, and I'm probably fine. Orius knows that he's immune to disease and, and poison, but this is something else. Mm. That, this, is that correct? Right. Yeah, this and is, I would this be is, able to, I'd know that? Yeah, this is something... I mean, you guys have all run... I was going to say, we all know guys. this because this is... Yeah. If every after every skirmish this happens, you've yeah. got to get the if it, if you, dodge. If you, if you fight them in any number, sort of pushing three three digits, then you probably have to tackle it. I mean, this is the kind of thing that uh, has caused most of the famine that has uh, led to. Right. You know, oh, okay, so Ori is well aware of what this is. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, okay. What did you do with the sheep? The sheep, I I brought it. I was going to take it away to safety. <laughs> When I saw it comes from the other side of the ramp. I saw Hello from back. the other side. <laughs> there, is, there is nowhere to go. He's in a plane. Literally, he's like that sheep miles to the was coast. A surface elf who was sworn to kill anyone that had the plague. Just so you know. Well, just so you know that Gavin was upon your steed. Where it went, <laughs> I don't really care. It's, it's undeath and its stench needs no longer be with us. Do you not find it concerning that our sheep friend may become not a sheep anymore and then try and attack our plagued friend? That was his job after all. We need to stop circle jerking like we're a bunch of nuns wanking over a Bible. And we need to think about how we'd get rid of this plague which is getting to the mountains. Then let's go. We were already on our way to the mountains. Let's go quicker. No offense to nuns, by the way. I'm if glad. anyone, if anyone here is in non friends, Gavin is stabilized. Yeah, we gotta get him we... going. Uh, can he ride on your donkey? I look at the dwarf and I just assume it's. I need to find Morty before. We... You can continue on foot without me, but I'm not going to be on foot. All right. Carry the human. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll carry on and. You know. I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna to struggle to carry. Cast is strong. You have, okay. you have a chest wound and parts of a halberd. Cast is strong. I was gonna say, you guys are in no much better has... shape. Y'all haven't gotten your long rest yet. Yeah, none yeah. of no, everyone's none of you sitting on like 20 hit points yeah. or less. Much less for some. Kastner is strong. Yeah, well, actually, did that heal? Did that cure wounds go full into yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fucking rest keeps getting interrupted by fucking people coming along. The one before as well. Uh, or did the no, one before bleed out? Yeah, you bled that out, buddy. Okay, that's why. Yeah, so I'm at sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, twinsies. Can Actually, I guess I was. At, no, I probably dropped to zero before I came back. So we'll say sixteen and not seventeen. But because yes. that one hit point. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen it. I've oh, seen. Oh, I know. I've seen. I've had it twice with Gavin. One hit point has made all the difference. Yeah. So, um, are you guys going to try and get some rest, uh, having yes. a little bit of shelter, a storm sort of finally starting to come across? You hear the uh, the echoing of uh, thunder rolling across the plains as, uh, as a light rain begins to fall, and uh, it actually oh. takes the edge off this heat, which is so nice. We're, we're actually in a, a we're, we're, we decide to rest, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's like mid afternoon, right? Or is it uh, how much time has happened as we've fucked late. around with sheep? It's probably Actually, less than an hour because he's still a sheep. Yeah, eleven yeah. o'clock this morning. So uh, it's eleven o'clock on this morning, exactly the eleventh of the seventh. It's today. 
this is all happening in this is actually a documentary guys Real time. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh my yeah. god oh this is it's 7-eleven that means it's free slurpee day at 7-eleven you can fill any size cup thing let's forget the campaign let's get it to go guys <laughs> see you later i gotta i gotta go and realize i can't consume that because it's not raw flesh and dry. Oh. Oh. oh feels bad man all the i hate. don't want to fall asleep while the sheep will become very angry with me um Orius says, I am very perceptive. We will take, you can enter your reverie, and I will remain watch, and we shall take turns. All right, let's just fucking get some fucking quiet. It's so, been very fucking loud around here. Gregor just, <laughs> Gregor just why. goes from standing to... Well, I don't know, Kasna, why has it been so fucking <laughs> loud around here? Is it because everyone's been fucking around a fucking sheep, turning people into stuff and getting fucking plagues? And then I fall asleep. <laughs> I, t I turn over on my bedroll and like you know <laughs> Gregor, Gregor just suddenly shifts 90 degrees so he is now horizontal instead of vertical and yes. he's instantly asleep <laughs> Kastner is impressed <laughs> that's what you get when you sleep with me <laughs> I will instantly instant <laughs> fucking boredom <laughs> And the plague. And the fucking plague. Right. <laughs> Interdimensional, um... <laughs> multi-purpose plague. I'm only going to need so... half the sleep of other people anyways. So yeah. For Morty. Oh, my God. Okay. So I, no, so I've offered to, to leave watch. Is everyone entering their reveries? And, and yeah. Because I only need four hours, too. I, I, can, I guess we can split it up. I was going to say, yeah. Zune, all of them only need four. I'm the only human who needs eight. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the dwarf, so, dwarf needs eight. As as Zune is actually resting, no, I'm, I'm going to. I'm leaving to go look for Morty. I'm not. You, are you are you leaving first? Yeah, I'm leaving. And then coming back? Yeah. Oh, okay. God damn. The place. Never mind. The place. <laughs> what the fuck are you <laughs> trying to do? <laughs> the place. <laughs> She's the dagger. Nothing. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> darling. <laughs> the fuck are nothing. you? Nothing. Nothing, okay, not well, doing anything. I'm gonna use a prestidigitation <laughs> to try and send up some sort of flare for Morty or something that I might have done in the past to find him in battle. Yeah, you can uh, you can send up a sort of like a a bolt of light that um, you you fire it up into the air. Um, you actually will be able to see as you step out. There is uh, the sheep is just sort of there, um, looks uh, looking at you. He's about sort of maybe. He's so done with you. 50 feet away from you, and is just sort of sat in the plains, glaring at you. Sheep uh, daggers at your eye. Yeah. <laughs> that oh. moment when uh, you you now have a, a sheep watching over you. Never go to sleep. Never go to sleep soon. Oh. And uh, yeah, you, you fire it up. Um, are you waiting here, or are you going out looking for? Uh, I'll like wait in the general area. I'm already faster than I am. I'll wait until- I'll go like a couple hundred feet out and then I'll send up my flare. Cool. Uh, you are circled by said sheep, but uh, it keeps his distance. Just I know bleeps, that, I know that he can't angrily. understand right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Come to life fucking. while I'm alone with you, I will fucking kill you. Um, <laughs> how long are you gonna wait? Uh, I'll wait maybe an hour or two before I send. Like I'll send up a couple of them in a row every <laughs> hour, so I don't want to draw too much attention. Uh, in which case, uh, you're sort of there, and uh, suddenly you hear a pop. I, I'm I'm waiting for this to happen. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm aware. And he's just sort of laying on the floor, curled up. Uh, sort of coughs. Uh, and sort of looks to you. Sort of all his gear has just fallen to the beside him. He... What the fuck? You shot me. I turned you into a sheep. We're even. That's actually pretty reasonable for a necromancer. I know. I'm just full of kindness today. It's throughout Christmas. Um. Right. Sure. So, my horse isn't coming back. It ran it up did. the cliff. It ran up the cliff. You saw where it went? Yeah, it was a fucking sheep. <laughs> I know. 
Um, so here's the thing. Where'd you, you get a giant eagle from? Oh, that's just... He's, he's the dumb one of the party. Don't worry about him. Okay. Um, so the thing is, we all have the plague. <coughs> yeah. Okay, you did catch that part. Okay. You've been out there for six days. Uh, yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Okay. I told then. you all. You were all starving. You all yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. You were all. I, I was expecting a couple days. I wasn't yeah. expecting. I was no. so busy with just you know hungry. You know. No. Yeah. We survived six days without water. We're fucking op. We, we are. We, we, no, no, we don't move. Will we, move we didn't survive <laughs> six days true. without we are water? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Some of us are alive. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go and take my reverie. We're going to the Black Mountains to cure ourselves of this plague because that's actually something you can do. You don't have to fucking die, you moron. Um, and you can come with us and be cured of the plague, or you can stay here and die. Quite frankly, I grew bored of you after you turned into a sheep and you couldn't care for me. He sort of laughs and hacks out some blood and just says, um, I'm done. Okay, well, just die then. Um, goodbye, and I start walking back to the camp. He mutters something very, very foul in Elven. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the only things that I, we we keep off the street. Straight at you! Uh, as uh, he just sits there and stares at the... Uh, I mean, at he the did water. offer to help. As I'm walking yeah. away, it's funnier just to let you die. I was going to tell you for slighting me, but now I get to go to sleep knowing that you're dying most painful death. So ta -ta. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> now I come back to the party. The sheep became a human. He chose death over being cured. Or an elf, whatever, whatever they are. He chose death over being cured. He wants to lay here and die like some sort of white knight. And I'm going to bed. I enter my reverie. Night! <laughs> Nighty night. <laughs> Nighty Morning. fucking uh, night. <laughs> who's who's still who's still resting? Because I offered to to remain to give watch. Gregor is KO. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm I'm out. Yeah, okay, Gavin's never woken up. So yeah, I, I'm having... <laughs> we should be worried about that. Casino will get up to take next watch. You need it. <laughs> Gavin simply so, never woke I'm up. I'm going to before anyone wakes up and still at watch. I'm going to actually. I still have two spells. Like I'm able to take my long rest. I still have two spell slots left of my fifth level. I'm okay. going to cast a dream, and I'm going to enter the dreams of Gavin to commune with him. Hello. Okay. Um, Don't mind if I so, do. Gavin, you are currently dreaming about dying, um, but it's not you. You are currently remembering someone else's last moments, uh, having tapped into whatever chaos is currently happening in the Raven Queen's domain. Uh, that energy was from one of a thousand uncatalogued souls that uh, is currently milling around waiting to be judged. Um, there's just been this huge influx and uh, it's more than any, like it, this is happening for all the gods of death. Like so many people have died and so many shoot, like the Tarask died. That's like, there's a load of stuff to sort of file away and everyone's fighting over where they go. And a lot of people have ended up in the wrong places. Uh, in the sheer chaos of it all. Um, it's given them a lot of power, but at the same time, um, a lot of restless souls, uh, which is not a good thing. And you are currently uh, basically shit scared. Um, you are you probably about 17, um, probably not really old enough to march with the armies. Um, you're wielding a halberd that's too big, armor that doesn't fit. You're terrified. Uh, you are pretty much entirely surrounded by uh, people you don't know that are dying or bleeding to death and screaming. Uh, and there are fiend touched, straight up eating people. Um, and as this happens, like terror befalling you and, and just sweaty palms, the sheer fear, and it's not your own fear, but at the same time you latch onto it. Uh, Aureus appears in front and of you. As how is Gavin reacting to the dream, first of all? As I, I mean, is, is like, what does Aureus see? Let's start with Aureus, that. Aureus sees a small boy that has Gavin's features, sort of like face. He looks younger. Uh, it looks like a very young Gavin. 
Uh, but there's, I mean, he's wearing armor that doesn't fit. He's actually wearing elven armor. Um, he appears to be a small elven boy. Uh, very young looking. I mean, by elven standards, you know, he's probably in his hundreds. Uh, but I mean, he feels about 16 because... As you do. That's, that's, a teen, that's a teenage elf for you. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, he just like, there's, it's like someone stunned the face swap kind of deal. Like it, it's not Gavin, but it it seems to be him in there. Who are you? I, I am Morius. I am your companion. Do you not recall me? I, he puts up the halberd. I don't know anybody. I don't know any of these people. Everyone's dying. I begin to reshape the, the image of the dream to the camp. And as best as I can recall it, I, I re, the dwarf sleeping and the campfire and the and Morty, I, I conjure up an image as best I can of Morty and a perfect image of Zune because we all know I know how to... <laughs> Look like Zune. Yeah, and uh, I show Gavin his body sprawled out um, and I said, you're unconscious. Uh, do you recall any of this? And I try to, and, and I ask him that question. As, as you're actually being presented with you, uh, it sort of breaks the hold and, and Aureus is now free to sort of like shape this into a slightly less traumatic dream. Um, okay. Yeah, with, you're you're going to have recurring nightmares, Gavin, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I gathered that. Um, Aureus, it, do I live? I've saved your life, yes. I was the eagle that presented itself. I brought you back to our camp. We are unfortunately plagued and I need you to try to regain consciousness as, as soon as you possibly can. I sort of do an assessment, just, I, I am broken at this point, but hopefully if I'm able to make it through the night, my connection to the divine will return to me and I will be able to assist in whatever way I can. What of the horse and Gwendolyn? The horse is no longer living. I believe it is on, on, on death. I, it has broken the cycle. I, I understand. Not... Did it make it to the tree line? There, I do not recall there being, Does, did Aureus, did, there, was there a body associated with the horse? Did uh, Zune bring back the horse at all? Uh, Zune hasn't found the horse okay, yet. Okay, I thought she, that's what yeah, I thought she, that's, that's, when she went out, she just went to go get the sheep. You so, probably saw the body on it when it yeah, ran. Yeah, you, you yeah. Saw, oh yeah, I saw the body, yeah. Um, I said, uh, Zune's horse has not returned. Morty's a good horse, he'll, he'll do what he needs to do. And, uh, say, saying this, I said, uh, we have decided as a party, I feel, Ga I feel Gavin in what we're planning to do, to go to the Dwarf Mar Mountains, okay. I tell him about the plague, I tell him that he has the plague, and we all most likely have the plague, and he's showing signs of it as much as possible. I also explained to him that, you know, I'm here to kind of pull him out of his, his, his unconscious state and try to bring him back to consciousness. At this point, my, I think you've done all you can at this point. I just need some rest. I am not, like, you elves, it unfortunately takes our human bodies a bit longer to recover, but I will be all the help that I can, but I also question the wisdom of carrying this plague back to the West. Uh, the, the sheep man, he was he had the right by it. The containment, as you know, in this war has always been the only solution to the last laugh of these fiend touch. Every person we touch, every animal we see, we will pass it along. And if we've won, and he kind of looks over his shoulder back across whatever victory this might be, as hollow as it is, we will only destroy that if we now bring the plague of the fiend touched to what little bit of the world we have reclaimed. Yes, you, you've, you've indeed made very good points there and I fully agree. We'll have to address the party when you awake. However, I hold very little sway with the two drow and I, Kazna and I zoom, <laughs> I say. Um, 
what are your thoughts on those two? There is, there is no one who is unredeemable in some way. However, those two come many close. Of us, <laughs> many, many of us have a much longer path to walk than others. I, you saw my companions, and he thinks back to Vincent and goes, "You don't know the roads that some will walk." To, in an effort to bring about their own redemption. Perhaps we will be the vehicles to bring these two to theirs, but that does not mean we should not be wary of them and know that they might not yet see their own way. I've I've traveled with uh, traveled with one who decided to take the long path himself. Thinking back to Unmade Gaming, Mike, Mike. He's on a long path, <laughs> that Mike, isn't he? That Mike's on a long path to redemption. <laughs> yeah. But um, and I just I I, uh, I will ponder what what is going to be the best course but i believe in the end of it all somehow the five of us will have to find a way find a way for us to make our way home but without dooming the world in the process very well i believe they're at both endangering ourselves from reaching the mountain and putting ourselves in dangers and others they are incredibly self-centered i do oh i'm going to i'm going to request the aid from you i'm when when i enter exit your dream before i enter my reverie i'm going to attempt to uh, prevent the necromancer from casting spells for the next 24 hours as we travel be careful she will not give up her magic lightly but and I just sort of motioned down to my body because I will be unable to assist you if this does not go as you hope. Very well, it is a risk I am willing to take. I came here to restore nature and balance and I see them doing the exact opposite. They have done nothing to help our cause. St. Cuthbert teaches common sense. Make sure you are using it before you walk this path, my friend. <laughs> and uh, Orius nod, nods his head and, and he says, uh, common sense would have not led me here in the first place. I would still remain in Elysium. And then um, I, I kind of conjure the image of the sheep and, and how like uh, I show, I kind of recall and shape the dream to show the incident between me trying to dispel the sheep and, and Zune counter spelling me. And mm -hmm. I, I say, um, all common sense has been lost, and then I exit the dream. Cool. Okay. You, um... <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh... Gavin face palms. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, Arrow, Altorius's play here, as you are... Everyone else is currently resting. Uh, Orius is going to... Um, walk up to Zune and start muttering uh, an incantation in, while she's in her reverie. Do I get some sort of passive perception on this even while I'm in reverie? Yeah, uh, you will. However, he gets advantage on. Uh, it's going to be a sleight of hand check. Um, Do I get anything considering my whole shtick is you know yes. nobody hurts it's, Zune it's, or it's... I will murder? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the point of you are coming out of sheer fucking exhaustion and much amount of death. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he's still he's Just still gonna have to be a roll for it. I'm gonna One thing about it: points of exhaustion. How many do we have? Uh, currently, technically none. Um, okay. I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna t tell you at the end of the episode. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> And uh, just just so you know, um, I just been meaning to ask like four times, and yeah, I keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Um, 
it's going to become a thing over this. So I, give me the name of the campaign is the Long March. <laughs> Indeed, give me a sleight of hand, uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately for Zoom, um, I'm I'm for you to Nuvu. <laughs> I'm going to try and say that uh, is going to give you advantage with his patron. So you have advantage in your also. Slide. Nat twenty. Yeah. Nat twenty. <laughs> uh, this is passive. You don't get to. You don't get to make rolls like that when you are unconscious. I'm afraid. Eesh. I was gonna say actually, I think that Nat twenty is from she used it. Will so, just never deleted it. Do, do you want? Yeah, that? I Maybe. Used it already. Uh, okay. I used it on the. Um... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Carol on CSC. Yeah. Do, do you want me to use a, a sleight one. of hand? Yeah, give me a sleight of hand. You get an automatically advantage. Uh, Thirteen. Right. Okay, that beats Zune, who only has an 11 passive perception, however... Can I? Can I? I haven't done... I, wait, what's my... Oh, my passive perception is awful. No, never mind. No. I'm sleeping. Yeah, can I go? Uh, it will also be because he's around, and... Let's have a look at Gregor. Uh, let's not have a look at Gregor. Your let's not. Uh, what do you need from me? Uh, what's your passive perception? So it's uh, 10 plus whatever. Oh, I find my... Oops, I find you. Uh, let's see, what is my wisdom? I don't think it's great, but... Uh, there we go. Uh, my passive perception would be a... Nine. <laughs> nine. Wow. Good night. Good night, everybody. So everyone I am fucking out of it. <laughs> um... So what uh what is the nature of the curse that you put upon uh Zune? So it's it's the spell enchantment is called Gias. I can't yeah. really pronounce it. Um yes. if the creature can understand me, uh while the curse is charmed by me, it takes five D ten psychic damage each time it acts in a manner directly counter to my instructions. So my instructions to her would be to not summon any undead creatures whatsoever for the next twenty four hours or use any necromantic magic whatsoever as we travel. Damn. Okay. Uh, so... Da, 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 da. Remove curse. Cool. Okay. And it is going to be... Uh, one was saved from Zoom. Um, but... Uh, Wisdom save? Is, yeah, it's a whiz save. Uh, it's not a disadvantage because you're an elf. Uh, yeah. But it is an ad advantage, unfortunately, because you are unconscious. Uh, I'm presuming a 10 isn't a pass. Yeah, no, that's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, what's your I, spell my save? My DC is 17. Yeah, no. So, okay. uh, <laughs> so just to make this clear, because I, I love this spell, uh, it's 5d10 psychic damage, but uh, once you take that damage, uh, you can't take that damage until uh, you've, again, until you've slept or until the next day. Okay. So I think that could actually kill me, just saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's gonna pretty be nasty. Standard. That's, that's, I will that's have no idea. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. Like, you might vaguely recall, like, uh, having a dream about it, I guess, but uh, you you have no way of knowing it's actually been done. No, uh, in, fact, all the time. in fact, no one no one here will know other than Orius, so okay. who he tells. Well, um, I know he did something, but. Chaos yeah. is not a cleric spell, so it's not. I would not under know what this spell and, is. Unless you have points in Arcana, in which you would recognize like certain things in the spell. But... Well, but Does I mean, any sort of mark on me? Is there any kind of? You, oh, okay. it's okay. Horrible. Well, I'm gonna continue my reverie like uh, everything's great in Zoomland. Hmm. Um. Orius is then going to take his reverie. He's going to wake Kazan and then uh, say he's going to take his reverie. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> wait, wait, wake her up. Eat shit, and then just. Go <laughs> <to> <laughs> Like, uh, I'm so glad you looked after us so well, me and my sister. I'm, we're getting along great. This is fine. Go to bed. It's, yeah. Kasna, we're, we're all right. Indeed. Kasna, as you've now slept, uh, you now have half your total hit point maximum. Woo! Uh, as uh, you were starting to heal from the I'm sheer fucking dying. trauma of this. Uh, and Wait yeah. a minute. What's your character's alignment, Orius? Wait, I guess it doesn't matter. He's uh, chaotic chaotic yeah. neutral. I do anything to serve myself so it's it's a very likely thing um and this scenario because i feel as if you're going to hmm. yeah uh, that makes sense impede yeah. myself and my own goal so so um yeah 
Did you, you uh, Kazna, you will actually hear um, uh, that uh, throughout the night, I mean, you can hear that uh, there is a very occasional sort of grunt and hacking cough as uh, Clayton is still dying out there. Um, uh, apart from that, nothing of event, nothing of note happens. Uh, do you just let your watch pass? Pretty much. I'll poke Gavin a few times, see if he's alive. Cool. Uh, you poke him. Uh, he actually seems to... He, sort of doesn't really swat you away but he makes movements uh he responds so uh clearly he's not still breathing (laughs) yeah um taking it to i guess uh gregor would be next uh will you just passing your uh yeah i mean i'll i'll pass my time by looking out on watch and um again clay clayton is just dying and that's, that's well, it. you know, you can. We're all fucking dying. <laughs> Aren't we, we all, all dying? Die hey, yeah. uh, spiritually and physically, all of us are dying here. <laughs> and uh, Gregor, you were actually woken up, uh, not woken up. Sorry, you were suddenly sort of stirred from your thoughts by a hacking cough, as a very injured Gavin is finally reunited consciously with the party, uh, and sort of comes to. Gavin, are you all right, lad? <sighs> well, you you don't look all right. You look like a fucking donkey that got fucked and run over by a cart five times, walked over backwards by the village idiot, and then spat on by me. How are you doing, lad? And I'm gonna bring it like, uh, like you know, bring him upwards Gavin to where he laughs can laughs <laughs> in agony because as he laughs you know as anyone who's had oh, surgery or anything yeah. the laugh is the worst thing you can do i'm just oh you bastard gregor uh, and i'm starting to do i don't pick up the accent oh i guess i'm going to make it I, don't look so hot yourself um has gregor remembered to put his illusion back up uh yeah my my illusion would be up over our, our rest i guess um, if uh, if you want to just uh, assume that it's up at all times and you can choose okay. to lower it when you want, well, just yeah, for... okay. So, actually, so he actually looks really good because I can't see anything. <laughs> Ugh, I see your fancy armor did its job again. Hey, well, uh, <laughs> bit of column A, bit of column B. Uh, understand. One day you will let me. Take a closer look at that to uh, try to incorporate some of your people's artistry into my own work, won't you? Hey, hey, one day, lad, one day when the fucking war is over. Uh, listen, bad news. We've all got the plague. You've got it the worst. I I heard. Boris yeah. came to me in a vision, a oh. dream, something. Okay. Shuffing, lad. What have you seen? Ugh. <laughs> uh, He's, his heart's in the right place, but he's going to be a problem. Uh, I figured uh, his heart's in the right place, but he's a problem. These two ain't got hearts at all, and they're a problem. So uh, it's good to have you back. Uh, yes. Once I wake up, I'm going to prepare my spells as per usual. Cool. We're going to the mountains. I'm going to say sort of as this... He- Yep. As this goes on, like you guys will wake up about now, as Gregor yep. is very loud. Gregor, hey. about that, what they the oh wait, when he showed me, did Aureus ever see him as a man? He did not. I'm trying to uh, discern whether or not I know that it was man. Clayton, because I'm the only person who ever met Clayton. Aureus uh, tried Aureus to re. Did... did he see him as a he man? Was, no, he was only a sheep. In I, I was just a sheep. Like I, I showed. Yeah, him he only saw him as a sheep, and then he turned back to a man, and they all left him out there to die. Yeah. So I do not see that it's Clayton. I just know that it's. I've been told the story. <sighs> well, I know he was standing in our friends. I kind of motioned towards Zunes as his way. It is the right thing to do for us to take the plague with us out into the lands we've already recovered is only going to bring the doom that 
this war was fought for right to our footsteps. We need to find a solution here before we go pass this on to everything else. Do we know whether or not animals get this and carry it? I assume it's kind of like- It kills livestock, it kills- And they're contagious. If Basically, if we give it to a squirrel and a squirrel runs off into the yep. woods. All of that bollocks, yeah. It's, I mean, it was, it's- It's, it's the perfect it. disease. Prolonged exposure. It's the reason, I mean, that's why you have next to no food uh, to march with is because the armies take everything and there's very little, like f mass famine, cannibalism, everything. Yeah. I mean, it's Soviet Russia in the darkest of days. It's a uh, it's nasty place, even on sort of like the, the good side of the war behind the lines. It's, uh, it's not pleasant. So, yeah. In good conscience, I don't think we can take this back to the west then you propose that we just sit here and die that sounds like a no. marvelous idea it's no, almost I... punct punctuated by hacking coughs from outside wait clayton's still alive he it, it takes uh, quite some time you get to the point where you you are gavin goes to clayton I... okay yeah gavin you uh you limp out i mean he's not moved an inch and yeah where am does i'm back i'm at half half everyone is now at half your max uh it's probably going to take another long rest before you really right uh, spell you. slots and everything come back yep all that bollocks comes back you are you are rejuvenated and everything but health um you guys you guys will see that uh clayton is just in a small outline of blood that sort of uh long since dried uh and there's fresh sort of black ichor vomit he looks emaciated he's completely bone white uh, and he's still staring off uh, into nothingness. I'm sorry, friend. I did not realize they had left you like this. And he uh, takes his water skin, at least tries to give him some water, hold his head up. Um, You're going to actually have to give him the drink because he's currently blind. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm doing the... Yeah. I, I'm doing the hold his head. He, uh... He I sort assume of, we've seen this before. We know at this point there's yeah, no hope. The, the, yeah, the, this is like... Even, the, even Gavin doesn't have hope? No, 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 no. Unfortunately not. Uh, but uh, he sort of recognizes your voice and just... What the fuck happened out there? <sighs> War. Death. It is the folly of men and humans and demons and gods. But it's thus the little people. It's never the Pentable Five or the generals or anyone else. It's just the people that suffer from suffering like this. Rest easy, he, my friend. He hacks and uh, sort of reaches up towards you, uh, trying to figure out where you are, and manages to lay a hand. Up. Yeah, I kind of guide his hand to yeah. my face. And he, like, carefully touches, tries not to transfer too much blood to you. But, um, I mean, I've already got yeah. it. Yeah. And he just says, if. If you think you might still, if you have the strength to still come and move and speak, then maybe you're not as far gone as I was when they left me. If you could make it to the mountains, the dwarves might be able to see you cured. Did, did the armies or whoever was left clear a path? Did they make a way for they make a way for any survivors to get safely back? Is there a... after five days, those of us who were too far gone were left to guard the, the cliff. I don't know how you ain't. 
coughing up a lung, but if you don't have the coughs yet and you're not weeping blood, then you might still make it. It's 20 miles to the Black Mountains. We will. I don't know how many made it back. If there are other survivors, they'll have taken all the precautions. I assume a trail like that will be easy to follow. He sort of tries to nod, and he just says, I, he takes something for me. Of course, my friend. And he uh, reaches up and grasps it. His jerkin is pretty torn, but there's a, a stitched piece of uh, deer hide, uh, like really raw deer hide, and it's old and it's tattered to hell and unfortunately covered in blood. And he manages to tear it free, and he just says, if you can clean it, and if you can rid it of any plague it carries, you take this back to my home. Where is that, Clayton? Now I recognize him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he said the, uh, is the Free Fields Coalition. I will take it there. And if I am unable, I will pass it to someone else who can. And uh, unfortunately, that is where he stops responding as we are overrun, I'm afraid. Uh, sorry for the, this is gonna be a real quick outro guys. So uh, I do apologize because I've overrun because of sleep and craziness, and loads of wild magic surges, but I've had an absolute blast. Uh, we'll do outros and stuff in chat and post all Absolutely. that stuff to so stick around to find links and stuff for us and will yeah um yeah i really have to run guys so uh yeah. thanks so much for uh hanging out today everyone who followed donated uh subscribed check out the kickstarter uh everyone that's on the show go check out your links uh spam them in chat for people to go follow you guys uh we'll be back tomorrow tomorrow is wednesday so i'm on at 1 p.m with horror on the orient express for some call of cthulhu uh followed by uh tell some yawning paul so we'll see you guys len uh there is dungeons and dragons streaming at the moment dice camera Action. So we'll go over and host them and go watch some of that together. But my friends, until next time, try not to roll too many net ones because we won't be here laughing when you do. Goodbye! Bye! Bye bye!